We are charged to protect these kids. Go. I'm a police officer for North Minneapolis and yeah, coach for North High High School. Go. These kids don't trust cops. It's definitely a difficult time right now. It's kind of weird, but I'm building bonds with police. The violence is nonstop. You can hear the gunshots. When them lights flicker at 7 o'clock, you ain't hearing none of that. Good afternoon to you, and we welcome you. Premier Boxing Champions continues with our official weigh-in. Our big night of action at the Capital One Arena. A loaded card with no shortage of storyline. Demond Nicholson, and his opponent Demetrius Andre. Here is Roy Manavilla. Here is the undefeated Speedy Rashidi Ellis, fighting out of Kiev, Ukraine. Please welcome Karen Chukachan. The young star of boxing, the hard-hitting welterweight top contender, Jerron Boots Ennis. I'm just different from these other guys. I don't do it for the money. I do it because I love being people up. Who knows? I, I could be lined up here with you myself. There'll be no separating them tomorrow. Here is Hector Luis Garcia and his opponent. He's the popular star of boxing, Gervonta Tank Davis. Some intense stairs, gentlemen. The weights are in. The main event is set. Showtime pay-per-view is going to be a rock in here in D.C. The countdown in D.C. is upon us. And the promise of fistic fireworks in the district tonight as the nation's capital plays host to Showtime pay-per-view in the return of unbeaten Gervonta Tank Davis against fellow unbeaten and fellow hungry champion Hector Luis Garcia. I'm Brian Campbell, Luke Thomas, your co-pilots this evening for Showtime Boxing Countdown, taking you up to the start of tonight's 9 p.m. Eastern Showtime pay-per-view. We are one half of the award-winning morning combat, Showtime Digital's combat sports three times a week or so breaking things down in all kinds of worlds but tonight it's just about the boxing luke thomas gervonta tank davis is back and any talk about future plans of a potential ryan garcia showdown must go through one hector luis garcia they certainly do and hector luis garcia and his trainer bob santos they look like they've been dialed in all week They've been saying all the right things all week. They look like they've been prepared for some time. This is simply putting on the finishing touches this past week. I've been very impressed with Hector Luis Garcia. Not merely BC because he had a fantastic 2022 upsetting Chris Colbert and then claiming a world title thereafter against Gutierrez. Both, oh, by, the way, by the way, all those bouts were on Showtime. But because he firmly believes the only reason why folks may not know his name, even with a breakout year last year, was just because he just wasn't given the right opportunities. He just couldn't get quite into the limelight. But he had a heck of a year last year, and now he has done truly everything to put himself in this position. Can this Southpaw take on another Southpaw? <laughs> not too far from here, by the way, Baltimore, Maryland. We'll have to see tonight. But Hector Luis Garcia really believes this is going to be a night just like he shocked the world against Chris Cole. Colbert, he's going to do the same against Gervonta Tank Davis. Garcia will rise up from 130 pounds where he holds a world title and take on Gervonta Davis, one of the biggest stars in the sport, uh, a local product of nearby West Baltimore. But tonight, let's be mentioned, in the nation's capital, Capital One Arena, and what's expected to be a very pro tank crowd. Oh, yeah. As he welcomes in a hungry opponent. It's going to be a four fight pay per view main card, 9 p.m. Eastern. As we mentioned, we'll be hitting you today on this countdown portion of the show, setting the stage. We're also going to have three exciting fights to break down with yes, sir. young unbeaten prospects on the way up. Vito Namalneki Jr. at 154 pounds. Brandon Lee, the big puncher at 140 pounds. And unbeaten Trayvon Marshall, another youngster looking to have his moment and continue the build. But if you're looking to purchase tonight's pay-per-view card, you might as well get ahead of the game right now. You can go on over to Showtime.com slash PPV. It's, of course, the return of Tank Davis, but we've got rising unbeaten welterweight Jerron Boutsenis in the co-feature for the vacant IBF welterweight title against Karan Chukajin. You've got 
Demetrius Andrade making his PBC debut at 168 pounds there against Damon Nicholson. And we've got a welterweight tilt that could end up being the fight of the night mm -hmm. as unbeaten speedy Rashidi Ellis, who already wants Boots Ennis and bigger things to come. But he's got to get through Royman Villa and that big punch from Venezuela. Showtime.com slash PPV. And, of course, we'd like to thank everybody watching us right now on the Showtime Sports YouTube channel. We're also right now... You can check out episode one of a brand new four-part docu-series that's streaming on Showtime. But episode one available to you right now on the Showtime Sports YouTube channel. And that's, of course, Boys in Blue. Brought to you by Emmy Award-winning director Peter Berg. We know him, of course, from Friday Night Lights, Lone Survivor, a long history in boxing himself. But Luke Thomas, following a North Minneapolis high school football team, which is coached and mentored by members of the Minneapolis Police Department, a very powerful four-fight docu-series that's, that's going to be in full on Showtime, but you can check out episode one right now. But we're going to be checking out a trio of interesting fights coming up. Luke Thomas, everyone in the building has been drawn in here by the star power of Gervonta Tank Davis, the Mike Tyson of the lower weight classes, a consistent pay-per-view draw filling up arenas around the country. This is an interesting turn for him, though. His first fight outside of the Mayweather uh, promotions banner, Leonard Eller before Floyd Mayweather had played such true key parts in his rise as a brand and as a fighter, stepping out on his own, though, in a unique situation, to say the least, where he already has a fight announced against Ryan Garcia, tentatively for April 15th, but as we mentioned, has to pass some big business first tonight. Tank, his own man now. Certainly is his own man. This is a vet built by him, built around him. He is not quite in a homecoming scenario, BC. We are in DC, not quite Baltimore, but there's a lot of camaraderie between the two boxing communities. It's almost like in some ways kind of one. And I got to say, this is for folks who think it's a tune-up. No, it is not. This is Tank actually trying to get well, I asked him why he took this fight when we did the announcement uh, six weeks ago. And he was like, well, I can't win. If I take some other fights, people say I'm not fighting enough right, guys. If I take too tough a fight, people say, well, why are you doing that? And then getting in the way of the Ryan Garcia fight. I think, in general, he just wants a really tough, quality opponent. He's got one tonight. As you mentioned, Garcia. Team Garcia has said this will be the fight of the year. We're going to make it so. And they may have to to pull the upset. But that's what's going to happen 9 p.m. Eastern to kick off the Showtime pay-per-view card. Right now, you can see in the ring, we're going to kick off our trio. trio of preliminary bouts and in the first one it's going to take place in the super welterweight division and 6-0 Trayvon Marshall with five KOs will continue his rise welcoming in Sean West so it's going to be interesting tonight on this preliminary portion of the card Luke to see which prospects can continue to make noise and make big statements on their rise to bigger things and maybe Showtime pay-per-view placement one day down the line. By the way a lot of local prospects I should say from Prince George's County Maryland just outside of the DC border tons of athletic talent comes from there including but not limited to one Kevin Durant. As you can see right there Sean West warming up Luke you're no stranger to DC no stranger to tattoo shops either. Yes. You want to rate the the ink hair of, uh, of, of young Sean West heading into the I a mixed bag. I think some I like around the shoulders. The rest of it, I wouldn't say it's for me. <laughs> See what Wes can do against, speaking of local products, Trayvon Marshall, Landover, Maryland yeah. product. 30 minutes or so outside of D.C. Not even that. It's in, it's in Prince George's County, Maryland, which is what I had mentioned previously. Uh, there's just so much athletic talent that comes from that county. Not just that place, obviously, in the whole uh, DMV area, they call it. But Prince George's County, in particular, has been an absolute hotbed of athletic talent. The same building before it was called Capital One Arena, of course, uh, Mike Tyson's final bout in his pro boxing career, which came on Showtime pay-per-view, came in a loss to Kevin McBride in this building back in 2005. Hey, big time boxing is back. I know you were here a couple years back for Amir Khan versus Lamont. Yep, that was down at the convention center. I was actually here downtown that night that Mike Tyson fought. That was then the MCI Center. Then it became the Verizon Center, and today it becomes the Capital One Arena. All right, here we go. Six-round action kicking off right now with round one. Super lightweights, excuse me, super welterweights, Trayvon Marshall in the black and white trunks with the frizzle. Sean West wearing white with blue trimming and blue boxing shoes as we get going early. Marshall working the jab to the body. Just 22 years old. Boy, right away it looks to me like there's a big speed advantage for Marshall. 
Marshall fought twice in 2022, recording stoppage victories in both, both times inside the Armory in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Good combination punch yeah. that has West Hurt. Marshall is all over him already. Already this fight is in jeopardy for him. And that'll do it just <laughs> like that. Wow. Referee David Braslow has seen enough in the first round. Trayvon Marshall appears to be headed to a seventh victory and sixth stoppage overall. As long as that was the official ruling from the referee, it appeared as he stopped the fight. We do see Trayvon Marshall looking a little bit puzzled into what's going on at the moment. Uh, I'll say this. For more senior fighters, that would be a bad stoppage. For a fighter at this level, where you're on the prelims, so you're not just getting started, but you're still relatively new in your career, you have single digits in terms of the number of fights overall, a referee is just not going to give you a lot of latitude to sit there and take punches. And covering up... It is something we call it in another sport, intelligent defense, BC, but by itself, not enough. You gotta do a little bit more behind it. And I understand, look at him, he's fine. Maybe the stoppage was early in that sense, but the referee can only make a judgment based on your body language, based on how you're responding to it. Marshall was all over him. Wes simply just stood there and took it. I'm not gonna say it was the perfect stoppage, but I understand where the referee's coming Look, from. Look, if West is not going to defend himself as he's getting lit up along the ropes, you are asking for the fight to be stopped. David Brazel, the referee, had seen enough. The long uh, extended break afterwards was the complaining from West, but it'll go down as a stoppage win for Trayvon Marshall. Now 7-0 and with six KOs, a young D.C. area prospect here. At 154 pounds. I've seen him on a few different cards on the prelims. Marshall, he is a talented young man. You saw how fast he was. He went right to work. And I also want to point out, too, another thing that we didn't even mention. He had backed West up on the ropes almost immediately. It looked like the bot was going terribly downhill before the referee intervened again. I see that West was in a better position. Ultimately, he wasn't nearly as hurt. But, but, I mean, every sign the referee had looked like it was a disaster. So, I get it. You hear the announcement in the background from Miguel Flores. First round stoppage win for Trayvon Marshall. I was hoping we could get him to go a little bit around, see a little bit more about what the buzz was about. But that replay of combination shots along the ropes with his opponent hiding behind the high guard, as we said, referee had seen enough. Impressive stoppage win for the young fighter who told us, Luke, in the fighter meetings this week, he thinks by the end of this year, even though he entered tonight with just six pro fights, that people are going to be talking about him from the idea of zooming in on that top 10, top 15, and starting to fight contenders. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got some work in front of him before he elevates himself to that kind of a space. But you can see why the local community is very high on him. You can see he's got great athletic ability. By the way, pinpoint accuracy, took the fight right to his opponent. And also, I'll just say this in defense of the stoppage a little bit, in terms of the approach that Marshall took, if blitzing an opponent when they're a world championship level fighter is a bad idea, yes. right? Because they're going to resist it, and then you're going to be gassed, and now all kinds of problems happen. But blitzing someone who is relatively new in the game, relatively young in their career, is often a very good decision because they cannot withstand it and the referee is simply not going to give you as much latitude. Martin had the right game plan. He looked to be in tremendous condition. He did everything he was supposed to. And by the way, it wasn't like Marshall was the one that stopped it. It was the referee's call. So everything you saw from the young man here from PG County, excellent work. Before we reset and set the stage for what's happening on tonight's Showtime pay-per-view broadcast. Plenty of local products here. Luke Thomas, one of them. Hey, would you call yourself a native of D.C.? It's where yeah. you reside today. This is your city. I grew up here as well. Unfortunately, we saw Lamont Peterson, former world champion, multiple divisions, yeah. make a comeback on the off-TV portion, was stopped. Uh, long career, great reputation in this area, but we'll see how the rest of the local products fear. But Luke, speaking of your home city, let's reset here. It's Gervonta Davis from nearby West Baltimore, uh, main eventing here in D.C. at this level, certainly for the first time on the pay-per-view level. How would you describe the buzz in the air fight week? We know it's closing in on, on almost a near sellout behind us in terms yeah. of the potential of real boxing fans who got in early because Gervonta is that type of attraction. Your city show out this week? It's been really funny because I was there for the press conference again when they announced it. Spoke to Tank that day and I was like, okay, this is going to be a big to-do and it is. 
they haven't done any uh, promotion in town. There's been no bus back buys. I listened to 106.7 The Fan, a local radio station, uh, 980 as well on AM. There's been no ads for it or anything. And yet, it's nearing a sellout. I think a couple of days ago it was at 16000 They're well past that now. That's all based on, I mean, it would have been a waste of money. You can see why, in fact, they didn't do it. It would have been a total disaster in terms of just wasting money. Tank Davis is a star. He is an absolute star, and there is massive word-of-mouth marketing that goes with him to the point, BC, where I have been hit up by my friends, <laughs> by my wife, by my attorney, all asking me for tickets tonight. And I want to point out, just based off of one press conference that did all the work to get the city hyped up, yeah, I would say the city's been alive significantly well, this the, whole week. The highlight package and the pay-per-view history of Tank Davis alone has played a big part in that in terms of the excitement that he brings there right in or around the larger paper, uh, excuse me, pound for pound discussion. He's a multi-division champion and so much potential for big business to come. Should he survive in advance tonight? But the real story that became during fight week was more about how live of a dog we all expect one Hector Luis Garcia to be, and to Tank's credit and his team, they have said the right respectful words. They know they have a hungry opponent coming after them today, a guy who a year ago, nobody's talking about Hector Luis Garcia. He had fought past eight rounds just one time in his career, but when he finally got the opportunity on 19 days notice last January against unbeaten prospect Chris Colbert, who was... You wouldn't say he's necessarily getting the Gervonta hype, but was being looked at as a super special fighter under the premier boxing champion's brand. Garcia pushed the pace, wore him down, nearly stopped him, took home a big decision. And as you mentioned to start the show, Luke, goes out there and wins a title against Roger Gutierrez at 130 pounds. He was more than willing to move up. And the whole idea this week of, okay, we know Hector Luis Garcia is sneaky good in that ring. But what about his mindset, his intangibles from the idea of he's got to step up to the brightest of lights here on the pay-per-view level, not necessarily in his opponent's backyard, but close enough. Luke, what did you take away overall from the through the language barrier from the man on the inside, 31 years old, the Dominican Republic, one Hector Luis Garcia? Yeah, I mean, he's not here by accident. Uh, Bob Santos told us he didn't get shoes growing up until he was 10 years old. Right? We're talking about a guy, you know... Uh, from, from the streets, from the Kaje, right? We're talking about a guy, salt of the earth, who has had to earn probably several times over everything he's ever gotten. So we're talking about, number one, incredible focus, dedication, consistency of effort over the course of years, even while being ignored. That's the first thing I would say. Second of all, you go back and you watch the Colbert fights, the Gutierrez fights. Now, they're slightly different because it's a southpaw versus orthodox. We're expecting a, a couple of southpaws matched up here tonight with Tank Davis. And so... We will see how that all plays out, but I just want to point out, he had so many crafty answers for them, and he doesn't incorporate a lot of movement, BC. He's not a huge mover in that way, but he loves to punch with guys. He likes to get them to open up and then counter. He loves to set traps. He loves to bait opponents. He is not just a guy who, you know, he's a name. He got a couple of nice wins, and they're here. No, he is a guy who, by taking the fight game by the scruff of the neck, and developing his own game when no one was watching is finally ready to cash in those chips. Will he get it done against a terrifying puncher in Gervonta Davis, who, by the way, also has very good fight IQ. That should not be lost, but still, a devastating puncher just the same. I don't know, but I do believe Hector Luis Garcia is a worthy adversary. I think he's going to win some rounds tonight. We're going to see how he gets it done. Yeah, Garcia will be fighting for Davis's secondary WBA title at 135 pounds. Of course, Devin Haney is currently the undisputed champion, but in terms of the stakes for Team Garcia, I mean, he told us himself after the weigh-in on Friday that, you know, this will change his whole life. When we talk about the landscape of opportunities available to him, Hector Luis Garcia used 2021 to announce himself. Tonight, he can make... Uh, you know, double, triple steps forward from the idea of the type of opportunities he could be chasing if he can get through Tank Davis. Luke, as we look at this fight, obviously you can just, it goes without saying, knowing the power of Davis and the fact that Garcia's moving up, that it's going to be incumbent upon Team Garcia to, yes, they're going to have to take chances, they're going to have to be aggressive, they're going to have to show the type of chin, recuperative skills that they're boasting, that is going to have to be there if you're going to upset, uh, excuse me, somebody, the, the skill and power and danger of Gervonta Tank Davis. But when we look at this fight from a statistical standpoint, from the CompuBox numbers, 
When you look at the lightweight average for punches thrown, Tank Davis attempts 20 less than the, right, the lightweight average. Now, on the flip side of that, he lands 47% of his power shots, and he's one of the most efficient and dangerous counter punchers setting up the perfect shot. He's got to be weary, though, against a boxer this good to make sure he throws enough punches. No away. doubt about it. I, the power difference is going to be significant. Remember, also, we have a guy in Garcia moving up from 130. Didn't look that small at the weigh-ins, but something to keep in mind. Dave Davis, can his power carries, let's say, well past 135. So that's going to be something to pay attention to as well. Also, I'll say this. Tank Davis doesn't have a high amount of volume. I think he's going to end up losing some rounds here tonight, certainly early. The difference for me is his timing has gotten much better. Look what he did to Roy Romero, that left hand over the top. His shot selection is great. Obviously, his power carries late, which you've seen in the Gamboa fight as well as some other ones. So this is a fight where a guy like Garcia, by the way, we haven't talked about this, he invited Colbert's best punch and took it. Better be careful doing that against Tank Davis. Absolutely. A lot more to come on tonight's main event. You can see inside the ring, though, in front of you, Diego Luque. And our second of three preliminary bouts on the Showtime Boxing Countdown show, part watch party, part live boxing broadcast. Of course, Diego Luque is going to take on one of the more exciting, young, athletic, powerful prospects we've seen who's come up in the larger Showtime system. We've seen him on Showbox multiple times. We've seen him in featured opportunities. It's Brandon Lee, just 23 years old. 26-0 with 22 KOs, but Luke Thomas, the storyline for Brandon Lee, while still unbeaten, is there were some things that happened last year in his two appearances, both victories, that really tested him beyond just that power. Yeah, he got dropped. He got dropped pretty badly, and we talked to him about it, and he told me that uh, he, you know, he understood. He, it wasn't an accident either. He had made a critical, he called it an amateur mistake, uh, not keeping his hands up basically and moving into the wrong position. He said he and his coaches have drilled that counter, that fix anyway, I should say, uh, more times than he even wants to count. <laughs> Sick of trying it. So we'll see how, let's see how defensively tightened up he is. We see, we know Brandon Lee can thump, right? Let's see how much he can avoid damage along the way. Lee's trainer is also his father. That's Lee in the black trunks with the gray. And, of course, Luque. In those Argentine. Color of the Bobby Argentina Celeste. flag, which is a big-time life change, sports change. When, from the standpoint, we're asking everybody who's from Argentina, how you know are they still partying from the World Cup? Has this changed their lives? This is a, Everybody's got videos of them in the town square in Buenos Aires living it up. This is a true story. Two of the translators at Showtime are both Argentinian. They both flew back to Argentina during the World Cup so they could watch it and experience it there the entire time. Pretty remarkable uh, commitment. Luque is 37 years old, but you see the experience overall in the number of fights. He believes in his toughness. And as you can see with the motion of the gloves, he wants Brandon Lee to come to him. Lee is already finding a home for that right. The straight right has landed, and now that bit of an overhand right. He's already finding the target. This fight, contracted weight of 143 pounds. Lee, of course, has largely operated at 140. Good counter right hand there from Lee. The counter left right. Combination punching. Boy, it looks to me like Lee doesn't fear the punching power of Luke at all. fight we talked about where Lee went down that was against Will Madera in August of 2022 it was a 10 round unanimous decision win for Brandon Lee by wide margins but that knockdown yes Brandon Lee showed incredible toughness because it was a vicious shot but as we talked about the work that has gone on in training camp since then it it shook him up a little bit it was a reminder of how dangerous this game can be and when you take on the step up level of competition that he has of late you got to be on point no doubt about it and he's always known he's a dominant puncher, but it was one of those situations where, like, as your career progresses and as the names get a little bit more um, seasoned or senior, they are going to be able to take your punch to some extent, and obviously they're going to be able to find any of your weaknesses as the competition escalates. It was a bit of a reminder for him that um, he's still a work in progress. He was honest that this, from a matchmaking standpoint against Luque, is a is a step down from where he was a year ago, taking on Zachary Ochoa in a fight that went the distance in Arlington, Texas. And then, of course, that decision win over Madeira, where he had to show that next-level ability to bounce back. 
See what he can do here against a rugged veteran. And Luke, who Luke goes by the nickname Elrina. Can you translate for those who are... Spell uh, it? R-I-N-A, Elrina. Jose? Rina? No. Elrina. Good feel out round there for Brandon Lee. He had a good left-right combo when they were in close range that shook up Luke a little bit and kept him uh, very much further away for the rest of that round. Lee was able to press him into the ropes but didn't really fully take advantage. I think letting the fight breathe, probably a good call. Lee has stopped 15 of his last 17 opponents coming in. The last two fights did go the distance, so if we know the power's there, we know the athleticism is there, but it's really about adjusting to the fact that not everybody's gonna go down when you hit them. At this level, it's a lesson he had to learn against Zachary Ochoa in his first meeting last year. It landed big power punches early, but Ochoa kept coming. He's gonna have to show the patience, the adaptability, the, the real the maturity that comes for a guy who's still just 23 years old. Yeah, we associate power with early stoppage, or not early, I should say, but early in the fight stoppages. But the reality is the better power punchers, they kind of keep it holstered until they need it. The rest of the time, you can just touch him, touch your opponent. Even with that, it's probably going to hurt if you have big power. And I think you see Brandon Lee, as his career progresses, settling into that role a little bit more. More boxer puncher. Round two of a scheduled eight. Lee controlling distance well. You can tell by the difference between them from the standpoint of speed and explosive explosiveness that Luke is going to need to get inside that jab if he's going to start having some success here. Yeah, but then when he did the first time, he got eaten alive for it. So you can see he's uh, somewhat retreated to the outside as a bit of a safer place. But of course, not only is that going to make it hard to land, it's actually going to make him much more vulnerable to Lee. Just like that. Loving the dipping jab here that you're seeing early from Brandon Lee. He's actually mixing it up. At times, he's got a bit of a blinding pumping jab, and then he'll be dip as well. <laughs> Lee of Mexican and Korean descent, his father born in North Korea, his mother a native of Mexico, grew up in Southern California. Said he gets his toughness from the Mexican side, but said he's already been feeling the positive pressure that comes in and on representing the Asian American community and said he has many young fans that reach out to him looking for advice and... Luque has changed direction of his rotation. He is now rotating to the jab side of Lee before he was moving into the right and he got eaten big time for that. And here he is back to that. Lee kind of forcing him in that direction. Good ring generalship now you're seeing from Brandon Lee. Yeah, Lee, Lee's not giving him a lot of options. as he He's getting jabbed no matter what, but as, certainly as he moves into the jab hand, he's getting punched with it. You can see a little bit more there. He moves to the right. He, get, he runs into the right hand. He's basically corralling him side to side to control his movement and then feeding him whatever opening is there through combination. Luke's face start, starting to show the collection of swelling and bruises from the consistency of Lee's jab. Luke winless in his last seven coming in, one draw during that stretch. Yeah, good round for Lee. But with two rounds in the book, this has been more about Lee working on his craft. He said he wanted to show defense. And here's a look back at what we saw in round two with that right uppercut and the right hand following it up over the top. Good dipping jab as well set him up for that uppercut. It put him bent over in a position where then he could follow through with it. Nice, nice work from him. Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. is the backdrop. And of course, Gervonta Tank Davis versus Hector Luis Garcia. A four-fight pay-per-view card begins tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
Showtime pay-per-view. You can go to showtime.com slash PPV right now. As we know, you talk about the home of combat sports. We got Bellator MMA. We have Showtime Championship Boxing. If you want to try Showtime for free right now, how about Showtime.com? Get your 30-day free trial. $3.99 a month for six months after that. Not just for the sports. Everything on the Showtime app as well. All right, I'd like to see Lee turn it up here a little bit. You're seeing a lot of wild overhand motioning from Luke. This can be timed. This can be or either eliminated. The uppercut doing a great job as he bends over to then throw. You can see he's sort of taking advantage of it. He's hooking and uppercutting. There you see it again. Perfect combination. What a great combination from Brandon Lee. Sharp power punches at close range. Another right hand over the top. Luke's taking the punches, but you can start to see a little wobbly at times. I mean, he has he landed one meaningful punch? I, I'm not. I'm not generally not sure. He hasn't been able to get inside that jab, but hasn't been able to get into punching range. Good footwork so far by Brandon Lee. But more than anything else, it's been the disciplining with the power, with the consistency of that jab, and knowing that that right hand is coming. I like how Lee's mixing it up. At times, he's you know, just single-shotting, single-shotting, and then he's changing the rhythm a little bit fast, then slow, and then he'll put three, four punches together, right? Never giving Luke a consistent look, a consistent rhythm, a consistent speed. Lee was a star high school athlete in track and field and soccer. Certainly see the way he's used that athleticism inside the ring. Power in both hands. You see him here with the jab, BC? Touch, 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 and then he's going to follow through more in combination when the opportunity arises. That's just senior-level work there from Lee. Just over 90 seconds, excuse me, just over 70 seconds to go here in round three. I'm not sure Luke is going to make it out of this round if you look at the body language each time those right hands connect. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't know what mindset... Luke's corner has, but and it's not like he's taking a beating. It's not really my point, but he's not meaningfully able to do much of anything offensively. I think if this continues and they're not able to come up with some kind of an adjustment, they might want to consider the health and safety of their fighter. Closing in on 30 seconds to go in round three. A lot of movement from Luke. I'll give him that. For the most part, he's trying to move. The problem is he can't really. He has to, he has to stop. Obviously, for him in his style of fighting, he has to stop to really sit down on his punches. And every time he does, he's getting comboed. Oh, monster right hand! Ropes kept him up there a little bit. Could have been ruled a knockdown here as the ropes prevented Luke from going down. Here's Brandon Lee trying to finish in the final 10 seconds. Combination punching along the ropes. Good body shot with the left hand. And I was going to say, BC, you hadn't done a ton of body work to this point. Investing it there late, especially through that combination, just really made everything much easier. And you can see the corner there of Luke. They might they need to take a long look at him. I don't know how much more beneficial it is for him to go out there. Look at some of these highlights here. Jab, you can see him changing the rhythm. And by the way, stepping back out at an angle when he needs to reset to make sure the left hook finds the, uh, the mark. Jabbing to bring the guard up. You see the same thing. Comes around with a hook, then straight. Beautiful combination. Bring the guard up, go around it, then come through the middle when the hands reopen again. But yeah, Brandon Lee's out here stunting. You can see referee Brent Bovell taking a very close look at Diego Luque after the round. Commission members taking a look as well. It does appear as if they're gonna let Luque come back out for round four, but this has been one-sided from the beginning, but particularly in round three. It looked like Brandon Lee might be one more clean combination away from getting a 23rd stoppage in just his 27th pro fight. Incredible knockout percentage, but this fight hasn't been about necessarily showcasing that power. No. It's been about the whole package. That's right. This is much more Brandon Lee just working on the craft and going right back to the body. Great read by him. The body shots had an immediate effect. Why not go back to him? 
Oh, what a dig. The left hand to the body counter as he leaned over and got out of the way of the overhand right, and he just stuck it to him. You saw it right there again, BC. Luke Hayes still moving. Really unable to land anything of consequence up to this point. Good right hand to the body from Lee. You mentioned it earlier, Luke. Brandon Lee just not respecting the power of Luke He got clipped there a little bit with a, le with a right hand, excuse me, from Luke So again, we're, we are trying to see how defensively sound he can be. Obviously, some stuff's going to get through. But in general, a very strong performance from him. And now he's got Luke leaning against the ropes and the corner post. Luke this, this might be it. This might be it. He has gone the distance in the past against world champion Jack Catterall. Excuse me, not a world champion. Maybe could have been with right. the fight against Josh Taylor. Right. Such a disputed decision. Fantastic fight, though. Brandon Lee taking his time, though. He knows he has a fighter who could be ready to go here in Diego Luque. 37-year-old veteran from Argentina, but the toughness is being shown. And also, you can see Lee is able to see everything coming. There's nothing really surprising him. He's able to make great defensive reads because he understands exactly which punches are coming at what time and where. Lee well, does need to be wary. We did see that single punch landed by Luke earlier this round that at the very least seemed to remind Brandon Lee of what's in front of him. And of course, the reference to his most recent fight last October against Will Madera when he was dropped hard early. Shook off the cobwebs fast though. And as you mentioned, uh, really says it was a rookie mistake, an amateur error. From the idea of keeping his chin out, keeping his head still. Much better movement, ring generalship, and really just an overmatched opponent in Diego Luque. Yeah, and Luque's still moving. He clearly is fighting to... He, he's showing enough in the... I don't know, you know, I keep, I'm saying that, and this is... This is not great for Luque, obviously. He's getting teed off on. The referee would be within Big his right rights hand. to stop this. Referee Brent yeah, Bolvel has seen exactly. enough just right there. A stoppage victory for 23-year-old Brandon Lee. Put the memories of the knockdown from last August behind him, and this was one-way traffic against an able, a game, but ultimately an unsuccessful Diego Luque. Won't call it flawless, but something pretty close from, from Brandon Lee there. Had a great jab, fantastic body work, great combination, changing up rhythm, changing up speed. Let's take a look at some of these highlights. Here he is pumping the jab. He gets underneath, then switches to the left hook. Beautiful doubling up on the same side. Great work there from Lee. Obviously staying and pushing him back. There he is, getting him against the ropes. And he's just teeing off on an overmatched guy, just kind of covering up, following him through as he's covering up, resetting, getting out of the way when necessary. This was one-way traffic. But Brandon Lee, while he has good power, showing some new wrinkles, overall developing his boxing game, and it makes me excited about his future, BC. Brandon Lee told us 2023 would go down as his breakout year. He's already made some attention on that early rise. We mentioned a multiple-time veteran of Showbox, the new generation. We saw him in a featured spot on the Earl Spence or Dennis Ugas pay-per-view undercard last year. This was the get-back win that he needed. Took the only shot of consequence, really, that Diego Luque landed. A looping right hand. Brandon Lee took it well. And I want—I wanted to also say I didn't—I didn't mention it during the highlights there. Just a really well-balanced fighter as well. You notice how his feet are always underneath him. He's never really leaning too far over. He doesn't lunge. He's just got real, real good balance in making sure he's got his weight under him. He can root into the ground for the punches, but also he's nimble and can change angles and distance whenever he needs to as well. Well, it's clear that that hiccup, that scare against Will Madera last year woke him up, matured him in many ways. Ladies and gentlemen, he said he saw a bit of that negative social media reaction that can come. There's negative social media reaction. Apparently, if you check the mentions, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know, some people are able to avoid that that, <laughs> that lure. Brandon Lee said he's got a, he's in a good place with that. Keeps the the haters at arm's length. 
kept Diego Luque at arm's length today, working behind that jab. But once he knew he was able to get off those combinations without much firepower in return, it was target practice for Brandon Lee. You can expect him to step up to a much higher level next time out as he told us, look, he wants to be very busy this year. Very busy, which is normal for a young prospect, but it's not going to be long before Brandon Lee is going to be in there with ranked contenders. He's getting to that territory. Luke. Yeah, I mean, he's still in a space tonight where he was obviously on the preliminary card, and we're happy to have him and cover his fights, but you can tell he's destined for great things. It's just about getting right, making sure that when you're ready... Making sure that when you want to take that next step in your career as a boxer, you're ready for it. It's a bit of a, I won't say it's a good thing that he got dropped, but it may ultimately serve as him for his overall growth and development. By the time he hits those bigger names, he got some of these issues, these bugs, so to speak, worked out in the in the software. To reset here from high above, Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., Brian Campbell, Luke Thomas. You may know us as the co-hosts of the award-winning Morning Combat Showtime Sports Digital Combat Sports Series every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. a.m. Excuse me, Eastern Time, on YouTube on the Morning Combat Channel. But look, we've been previewing this fight card all week on the MK. It's Javante Davis. It's Hector Luis Garcia. 9 p.m. Eastern, the start of tonight's Showtime pay-per-view card. But a lot of our analysis, excitement heading into here was the next step in the oh, process yeah. for another young, undefeated fighter. And that's 24-year-old Jerron Boots Ennis, the welterweight from Philadelphia who, let's just say it, could be the next big thing in every possible category. Tonight, in the co-main event, he's got a big step up from the idea of the stakes. The interim IBF welterweight title on the line against a hungry Ukrainian boxer, Karen Chukajin, who's making his U.S. debut but at least from the American boxing perspective, it's been really about Boots and taking that next step. Jerron Boots Ennis told us after Friday's weigh-in, this will probably be that last time, right, that he's fighting at this level. If he wins this tonight, he's the mandatory for unified welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. Luke Thomas, we don't know, is it going to be Spence versus Terrence Crawford this year for all floor belts? No matter if they fight next or not, if Jerron Boots Ennis wins this, there's no more denying him from the standpoint of too high of a risk we got to avoid him he has played the system knocked on the door in the sanctioning bodies it's now or never here for boots yeah they don't want to fight him and i don't blame him who would you know you're talking about a guy who we have said this before in fact we just saw brandon lee fight we asked brandon lee excuse me during this week how would you evaluate Jerron Ennis as a fighter? And what he said was he was basically a video game fighter. Like, I want the guy with the best speed. I want the guy with the best footwork. I want the guy with the best power. I want the guy with the best X, Y, Z. He's got it all. Think about it. People like different things and different styles of boxing. Some people like the in-close phone booth style. Some love the stick and move. Some love the power punching of the heavyweight division. Whatever, whatever your particular style or the kind of thing you gravitate to in boxing. The reality is... Ennis can do any of those, and he can do any of those really, really well. Now, has he faced the big names that will actually tell us if this kind of ability translates as far as we think it does? No, he hasn't fought someone yet that can like a, like a like a Bud Crawford, like, like a Errol Dennis Spence, Ugas, like an Ugas. He hasn't fought those guys, but the guys he has fought, he has made them look like amateurs, yeah, like amateurs, like it's nothing. It's, he is. He, what, he is. The, he is. I'll say this, BC. He's the to me. He's the most exciting up and coming talent in boxing, independent of weight class. And in some years, I mean, you are getting the almost Roy Jones Jr. comparisons more for just the idea that he's so athletic, so dynamic that you don't know where that ceiling is. When we have seen him against the <laughs> Thomas Delorme, uh, you know, other fighters on that title level, former champion Sergey Lipinets, it's just been cut right through without any opposition. Let's see if Karen Chukajin can be that opposition tonight. But Lucas, we close out our three-fight Showtime boxing countdown preliminary card action. There's another young rising star who's mm -hmm. making a lot of noise. Vito Melnecki Jr., just 20 years old. He's already headlined a national TV bout on Christmas night uh, two Christmases ago. Did suffer one loss, but has bounced back effectively since then. He's not only going to be in our featured bout tonight in a 10-round bout at 154 pounds, but he packs a punch. He packs a crowd everywhere he goes. Not just did he say, what, he's selling a lot of tickets for tonight here in for Washington, sure. D.C., but the Roseland, New Jersey native is having a watch party tonight up in Jersey, Fairfield, New Jersey, hey. at a steakhouse. Here's some of the pictures from this event. 
It's all about white magic up there in Fairfield, New Jersey tonight. Literally. Yeah, that's an interesting name, nickname, white magic. Kay Karoma gave it to him of all people, right? A fantastic amateur trainer, now a pro trainer. Yeah, and, and this is a guy, Vito Milnicki is a guy who's been earning his stripes quietly. You talk to some of the other boxers from this area all the way up to where he's from, anywhere in Newark, the Tank Davises, the Jerron Ennises, they all know him too, and they all have nothing but good things to say about him. A kid who kept his head down, didn't complain, just did the work, and is now beginning to build his career. Two years removed from high school. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. 13-1 and one with eight KOs. That one loss did come in 2019. We'll talk about that as we close in on this fight, but it's how he's responded from that and everything. I mean, so much poise. We talked to him this weekend, multiple stops. And it's for a 20-year-old, it's like to be that confident, but that humble, uh, talks freely about the the, the the side steps in the ring, the things he's working on, but he just believes that, you know, I've been I've been made for this. He said there's no boxers in his family. There's good athletes. There's amateur wrestling and football history, you know, upstate New Jersey, big time football area. And they can wrestle real well. But his too. transition to the boxing game, it really has been impressive. He's gonna be up there against Omar Rosales this evening, who brings a nine one and one record. So another step up here for Vito Melnecki Jr. But uh, a, a young guy to watch with that level of flair and really that it, it's sometimes a fighter meeting could be nothing. Sometimes you come out of there going guys got it together and also I, I really believe he has benefited massively from the mentorship that he's gotten from other fighters Shakur Stevenson you can yeah. throw his name in the list there as well he has seen Vito Milnicki Jr. he's seen what does it look like when someone gets from where I am to where I want to go what are all the various steps he actually knows the people personally who have done all this who are ahead of him so he's not he certainly wants to make a big splash he certainly wants to have a dynamic evening I think tonight but he also understands all the little pieces of the puzzle that have to be collected and how much time that might take. In that sense, he's not necessarily rushing it. He knows if I just follow the steps that the people in front of me have shown me exactly how to do it, and they've put their arm around me metaphorically and, and, and quite literally, I can get there too. Tonight is another step in that direction. Yeah, an exciting young fighter who is, seems to show that poise that, that's above his age, and he's already survived, as I mentioned, sort of a, a, a close decision loss in which he's, he said, I've been reading, I was reading my headlines, okay? I was reading my headlines, he got a new car, you know, he's a high school kid who just graduated high school who's in, in big featured fights on television, but it's what has he done after that since the first loss. It's been a consistent stretch, and he went 10 rounds last year for the first time. So when you look at him, just what, 13 and 1 with 8 KOs, not even 15 pro fights yet, but at 20 years old, he's got his head on straight, knows the direction that he's heading. Uh, another test here against a 32 year old veteran in Omar Rosales is upon him. One guy, though, that Vito Melnecki Jr. said, hey, I got some sparring time in ahead of time, is another must-see oh, matchup on tonight's yeah. Showtime pay-per-view card. So in the welterweight division, we're going to see unbeaten Speedy Rashidi Ellis in his second fight since transitioning under the PBC banner. But the guy he's facing has made a, a good impression on a lot of us this week. It's Royman Villa. He's Colombian by descent, born and raised in Venezuela. And we saw him last September make his Showbox debut. I was happy to be on the call there as he handed one Boca Chica, known well in these Showtime boxing parts, his first defeat. Nelson Figueroa, Boca Chica, Boca Chica, excuse me. But Royman Villa, just one loss, and he says, they screwed me by decision in Mexico a couple years ago. He brings big power, but how about that, that look? He is terrifying. I mean, terrifying to look at. He is, obviously, he's in, he's in fantastic shape. He throws a lot of punches. He'll fight with all the aggression in the world. But he just also has a certain, what would you say, BC, <laughs> demeanor? A certain I don't care. And he's not even a trash his, talker. He's been right. humble. And but the thing is, we're not just making this up because his fight style and his record speaks to this fact. He is happy to meet you right in the middle, wherever you want to go. You're ready to gunsling? Let him know. He's your huckleberry. And then on top of it, he's got, I would say, pretty good power. Big he's time power. undeterred. He is a handful. Now, he's going up against Speedy Rashidi Ellis, who's very much a slickster. Kind of, in some ways, the opposite. That's why I actually love this fight. I think if you talk to the boxing hardcores, they'll kind of sneakily tell you yeah. the Ellis and then the Via fight. That's the one that they're most watching. 
But for Royman Villa, if you haven't seen him before, get ready. He is a tornado of punches. So Royman Villa, well, this will be his second fight in the U.S. The first one was that showbox fight I mentioned. He's 25-1 and one with 24 KOs. That victory over Boca Chica, which was a wide decision, one-sided by the end of it, uh, was the first time he didn't score a knockout. So you, you can see what he brings to the table. But we are going to head back to the ring. Villa got some sparring time with one Vito Melnecki Jr., the young 20-year-old. Now it's time in our featured bout here on the Showtime Boxing Countdown prelim Prelims, excuse me, as we see Vito Melnecki Jr. We know about that party back at the Steakhouse. A lot of fans hoping he can continue the journey. Omar Rosales is the opposition in front of him. Got the sombrero. That's nice. <laughs> Love that. 13 and 1 with 8 stoppages is the 20 year old Vito Melnecki Jr. Roseland, New Jersey is where he calls home. And 9 1 and 1 with 5 KOs is the 32 year old Omar Rosales, who turned pro in August of 2020. So he's been very busy himself to get up to this point and just one defeat. So we'll see what type of opposition he can give to the rising young prospect. Yeah, we talked to Omar Rosales this week and we asked him, like, you know, give us the say. If you've never seen, if someone's never seen you box before, what can they expect? And he's like, I'm that dog. I'm that guy. I'm that guy who's going to meet you right in the middle. I'm that guy that's going to bite down on the mouthpiece, and I'm going to beat you, he said, with corazón, with heart. Um, we will see. He's certainly got a tough task in Vito Milnicki Jr. tonight. Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. Starting to fill in here as we close in on that 9 p.m. Eastern time start of tonight's four-fight car, four fight, excuse me, Showtime pay-per-view card. Ten rounds in the super welterweight division right now, though, between Vito Melnecki Jr. and Omar Rosales. I gotta say, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit mad at the DJ tonight, BC. You needed more. I need more. I mean, if you're in DC, and you got DC fighters on the card, which they do. So you need some '90s jams. No, we need some go-go music. Go-go music is a style of music very specific to Washington DC. It only exists really here. Yeah, they don't have that in Connecticut where I live. Uh, I know. It's it's ours. And you can't have it. Right, you can have it. There we go. <laughs> Round one of the action between these 154-pound fighters is here. That's Vito Melnecki Jr., the young prospect in the gold with the black waist. Melnecki, by the way, not a big puncher, a decent puncher. But overall, I think you're going to see a much more well-rounded skill set from him relative to Rosales. Earlier I said Melnecki's loan loss came in 2019. I meant to say 2021 in April against James Martin, who came in with a 6-2 and two record. Turned out to be a majority decision upset loss for Melnecki, who's gone 5-0 and oh since then with three victories by stoppage. Boy, right away, the jab of Milnicki is timing Rosales as he closes the distance, and he's getting his head snapped back, and he can't make any use of the entry. Already the jab, and I should say the lead hand, rather, of Milnicki doing great work. Talk about how much that loss to James Martin in 2021 humbled Milnicki. He said, when I win fights, I come back to my cell phone in the locker room. There's about 200 messages on there. That one time I didn't win, though, just mom... Just siblings, just cousins, just closest friends. Yep. A reminder of, in this fickle game, they love you on top, but you are only as good as your last fight. Every fighter will tell you the loneliest time they ever have is after a loss. When they're winning, they're their hero, they're the, the party of the city. But when they lose, they feel very alone. Rosales is a 32-year-old native of Houston, Texas. Born in Mexico. He's been very busy since turning pro in 2022. Now, looking very patient here as he works the jab. Good left hand. Excellent left hook there as Rosales didn't really change position and he just came back up, moved right into it. Nice right hand there from Milnicki, sticking him as he comes in. <laughs> Rosales goes by the nickname El Charo, which he said had, had to do with the Mexican national sport of bull riding. Right. Mm -hmm. 
But Rosales said he had plenty of respect for the skills of Melnicki coming in, saying as a prospect he would rate him about a 9 out of 10. So he knows the speed, the young ambition, the aggressiveness that Melnicki can bring here as we close round one. Great first round for Milnicki. Jab was working. Right hand found a home as well. Got out of the way of just about everything Rosales was throwing. Intercepted him on his entries. Excellent first round. Milnicki fought three times in 2022. All victories, of course. And here's a look back at the opening round. A perfect right counter from Vito Milnicki got the attention of Rosales. Yeah, perfect pull-two counter. You can notice Milnicki kind of leaning over his front foot, baiting the entry baiting the punch from Rosales. Then as it comes, he moves back and then counters himself with that counter two. Good work. That, how about that Frank Martin pull two counter? Woo! That's about, that might be the best pull two counter I, I see. All, I saw all year. I mean, I, I think he fought at the end of 2022 or so whatever, but you get the idea. Hector Luis Garcia, who of course will be opposite Gervonta Davis in tonight's main event. One of those sneaky contenders for fighter of the year. and Definitely Probably the leading one for breakout fighter of the year, but don't forget Frank Martin, who just in December, boy, did he get our attention. He, he secured Derek James, trainer, of course, of Jermel Charlo and Errol Spence as the trainer of the year. Bob Santos, Hector Luis Garcia's trainer, would have had a good chance to win it without that. Saw Derek James during fight week this week here in D.C., Unfortunately, the setback for Jamel Charlo with the injury against Tim Zhu, the undisputed super welterweight championship. We'll be looking for a new date between those two. Originally scheduled for late January. Jab working early for Milnicki. Nice. Kind of came low with it, then raised it up. Even though he fought three times last year, Malnicki said he's hoping to fight upwards of four or five times, saying that's the best way to get experience, being in there. So he's going to the body, and then he's getting underneath, just like that. So you see how he went to the body? And then the next time he starts low, but then finishes the punch high. So Rosales thinks it's going to be another body shot, and then leaves his face wide open. That's just great work. Good head movement from Melnicki to avoid a counter right hand attempt from Rosales. Melnicki said he knows Rosales will be tough. Comes from that fighting city of Houston, which is certainly becoming a an even bigger boxing hotbed. Shout out to our Showtime sports colleague Raul Marquez, the former world champion. He's like the mayor of Houston. Rosales cornering Melnicki here. As we close in on a minute left in round two. Rosales having a hard time with the distance. Bit of a low punch there. That one was below the belt line. He, Rosales is right to complain about that. Referee David Braslow calls a halt to the action here as Rosales is given time to walk off that punch. South of the border, as Moro Ronaldo would often say. Ran into Moro today, who of course will be on How the was he? Call Showtime pay-per-view call tonight. The legend, as you often said, maybe the GOAT. Maybe the combat sports combined GOAT. A guy, any season, any sport. From pro wrestling to kickboxing to MMA with Bellator and strike force before him. He's done pro wrestling at the highest level, commentary. He's done boxing commentary at the highest level. He's done mixed martial arts commentary at the highest level while Mel Nicky lands a beautiful right hand. That right hand seemed to hurt Rosales. And don't forget, Morrow has also done kickboxing at the highest level. I don't know any other commentator with such a distinguished resume Moro as Morrow also hosted a reality show last year on CBS as well. How about that? And the jungle here. Here's another right hand from Mel Nicky. It's, it's the same pull two counter. Having no trouble timing Rosales and landing big power punches to end the second round. We mentioned Fairfield, New Jersey. The watch party. Watching the broadcast and cheering on young Vito Melnicki Jr. 20 years old. 
Uh, Looking good here in round two. He faked to the body, then went upstairs to cheat the distance only so he could land the right hand. Did it twice. There's another example of it just like that. That is excellent work. So the jab was landing before when he was switching up body head. Now he's using that just to cut the distance to bring a punch from his power hand behind it, building on what he was doing in previous rounds. Love that. By the way, we talked about the stern look that Royman Villa, who will be in tonight's welterweight till on the Showtime pay-per-view main card, has looked. Here's a great quote from Villa this week when asked about studying his opponent, uh, Speedy Rashidi Ellis. He said, no, nah, I studied in school. I'm not here to study anybody. I'm going to come after him and be aggressive. I'm going to be myself. So Yeah, I believe him. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. He's got me hooked. Round three here, 10 rounds, 154 pounds, and rising prospect Vito Melnecki Jr., so far, everything really working pretty nicely for Milnicki. He's got the jab, then he turns it into a left hook. He's got Rosales not knowing where the punches are coming from. Down, oh, le two liver shots, followed by a left hook and a right hand from Milnicki. He is dealing. Rosales could go at any time here. Referee David Braslow taking a look. Good job, El Milnicki. He underhooks him, turns him into the ropes. And now he has reclaimed center. Good poise shown by Malnicki. He knew he had Rosales hurt, but didn't overextend. Pay attention to that left hook to the body. He's been going to the body just like that the whole time. Let's see if he can mix it up. Including if he can do it while Rosales jabs. There it is again. One Double jab right hand. Ends with another big right hand. The power shot's landing on a consistent basis here for Maliki. Like to see him continue to cut off this ring. Try to put Rosales in a corner. Rosales is starting to lunge a little bit. Which means once he gets to the position he has lunged to, he is not very mobile. I will say the left hand of Milnicki a little bit low. A couple times it's got a little bit low. And Nicky targets the body of Rosales with a combination, looking to bring down the guard to set up that overhand right. But you talk about standing in punching range, Melnicki, largely in front of Rosales, not been made to pay up to this point. Not at all. Oh, my. That right hand barely missed for Melnicki. Just under 45 seconds to go in round three of a scheduled 10 oh! big right hand. See if Rosales can survive the final 30 seconds. Oh, he just moved. He stepped offline to throw the right hand. He did it again. Rosales is going to go out on his shield if he does. He's standing and throwing. He is square. Look at him. He is literally square to his opponent. Now, well, now he got an angle, but before he was quite square. Another clean left hand from Melnicki. Rosales had his right hand caught in the ropes there in that earlier assault by Malnicki. Another right Oh, kick. he can't see anything coming. That's it. That's right it. hand drops him, and the fight oh. no, is no, no. This is a knockdown ruled, excuse me, by referee David Braslow. Let's see if Omar Rosales can show him something. He will live to see another round here. I got a feeling it's not going to go past this next one, BC. Big time power punching from 20-year-old Vito Melnecki Jr. To close the third round, let's take a look back at what we saw. Oh, slip the jab and then left hook to the liver. Where's Boz rooting when you need him? Big body shot and then going upstairs with the left hand. You love how Melnecki systematically breaking his opponent down. Just has a real keen sense of what he's going to throw and when and is able to move around it. Oh, that was brilliant. Straight one, two, but he still lowers his level, so it looks like it's going to come to the body. Caught, he caught him there flush with the overhand right. Look, the fight could have been stopped after that right hand. It looked momentarily like referee David Braslow was about to do that, but he allowed Omar Rosales a chance to beat the 10 count. He did, and we will enter round four of a scheduled 10. Milnicki is basically doing whatever he wants. Milnicki fought to the 10-round distance for the second time 
in his last bout, which came in October of 2022, a decision win in Brooklyn over Limberth Ponce. Milnicki has just owned Rosales' jab, and you see the, the corner towel for Rosales being thrown in there. Very good call. That was unnecessary punishment, didn't need it. Fantastic job by Milnicki. But the big key, BC, in this round and the last one, Milnicki having a keen sense of how to counter the jab. He saw the jab coming from Rosales a million miles away and slipped to the body off of it or just countered over the top or just came right to the middle. Well, Nicky celebrating on the ropes. You heard the little pop from the crowd. He said he was able to bring a good amount of family and friends down from northern New Jersey to the fight tonight in Washington, D.C., but it was capital punishment for Rosales. As there Melnicki he, put together power punches, excuse me, and he made them count loose. Certainly did. He got under the right hand that time and was able to, to counter him. But either case, getting underneath, there he is, getting underneath, underneath the jab in the right hand, coming to the body, and then left hook with an overcommitted Rosales who was basically stuck in position. And then the referee basically had seen enough, obviously with the corner towel as well. You can see on the young 20-year-old Vito Melnicki Jr.'s body, Good placement of tattoos, but the one on his left bicep, bicep, he said, ultimately means the most to him and really echoes the advice that he says he's taken during throughout his lifetime from his parents. The tattoo reads, comfortable being uncomfortable, and you saw already for a young fighter, responded in all positive ways to his first pro defeat in 2021, a majority decision loss, and has now extended that win streak since then to six fights. There just seems to be a maturity to Mel Nicky that is beyond his years. There's still a lot to prove. There's still a lot to go in terms of stepping up. And this year, he said, is going to be a big one for him, or so he hopes. But just, just, just really has next level poise, confidence, and seems to have his head on straight here as he continues to advance up the rankings. Two things. Number one, let's just be honest about it. His team is doing a great job with him, right? I know there was the one slip up. Now, what was it, six, seven fights ago you mentioned? Okay, fair enough. But in general, they're giving him the right kind of opportunities at the right time. Second of all, what I would say is, doesn't it feel like that loss is a completely distant memory Absolutely. from the guy that we saw here? A lot of times you see fighters being like, oh, that wasn't me. That was 30% of me or whatever. Whatever kind of thing they want to say where it's not the full them. And sometimes, obviously, that's really true. It's clearly true in this case. This guy looked phenomenal tonight. And by the way, we saw him... Excuse me, correct me if I was wrong. We saw him in Brooklyn on the Danny Garcia card, I believe, and some other ones as well. This is maybe the best I've seen him look. Now, okay, his opponent was overmatched, but just in terms of how he set up his offense and all the different ways in which he could get it done, taking away the jab of Rosales, among other things, he just looked really in command of his own skill set. Very, very Great strong performance. Great discipline shown from the young fighter who, uh, you know, you can't talk enough, again, like I keep saying, about how impressive he is as a speaker and the confidence he shows. He did, like I mentioned, headline a PBC on Fox Card on Christmas night back in 2021. So the idea of pressure and the bright lights doesn't seem to bother him here. I can take here. these off now, by the way. It was a good featured placement opportunity tonight for him. And the, fi and the final of three preliminary bouts that we saw on tonight's Showtime Boxing Countdown show. But once again, Brian Campbell and Luke Thomas with you. It's all going to go down at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. Showtime pay-per-view. You can, of course, can purchase the event right now. Don't wait any longer. Go to Showtime.com slash PPV. But, Luke, let's reset at the top here. Gervonta, Tank Davis, Hector Luis Garcia. So let me ask it to you like this. If the key to victory overall, I mean, or I guess the key to avoid a disaster for Garcia is he's going to have to show a chin. He's going to have to show up tremendous uh, head movement. He's going to have to take the right chances at the right time without letting it cost him. What are some keys for Gervonta Davis in getting this victory tonight against a very crafty and mentally tough opponent? I think of it, you know, it, a lot of different ways you could look at it. I'm going to argue two different things. Number one, I think he should be on the lookout for a couple of different punches that Garcia throws that are very bread and butter for him. They land pretty consistently. They set up a lot of his other offense. If you can take some of that away or make him pay for using it, right, you're going to be in a great spot. How about the right hook of Garcia? It's just constant, over the top. Obviously, in combination, single shotting, against the ropes, in motion, you name it, at angles. By the way, he's big at angles as well, obviously, with the, when he has orthodox opponents. But I think taking away that right hook, which is a very keen weapon, is going to be big for him. Here's the other one, BC. A guy like Garcia is not... Who's like the most 
impressive volume puncher you can think of, right? Who's who, somebody along those lines? Who would you think? Who would you say? Who just overwhelms you with activity? With volume and activity. Volume, but educated volume or not? I mean, you got a Gennady Golovkin when he was in his prime. Sure. So uh, active with that. And, and I don't want to compare your... Garcia to prime Golovkin, and he's not. He doesn't have that kind of volume either. But I do think he does have enough to steal rounds. Yes. Right? He can keep fights close. He does. By the way, we haven't talked about this. The tape shows that Garcia does have a very good chin. Now, against Tank's power, I don't know if anyone has a good chin. But in general, he's pretty sturdy. So I'm going to say this. I think Gervonta, I, his best work lands when he punishes people to the head. But I think he's going to have to set that up tonight with a fair amount of body work. I really believe that is going to be a key focus for him in this fight tonight. 33%, according to CompuBox, of Gervonta Davis's landed punches, on average, are to the body. One out of every three for Hector Luis Garcia, just 13% downstairs. So you even heard it on the Showtime All Access pre-fight documentary show that set this up. Calvin Ford, the trainer of Gervonta Davis, said they know it's going to be a competitive fight to a certain point. They do believe that the body shots could end up leading De or Garcia to trouble in the end. And obviously, Garcia's got to overcome that potential power difference between them. But as Luke said, you really have to just sort of, I don't know, be not amazed, but 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 give him credit. The way that, that Hector Luis Garcia and, and his trainer, Bob Santos, is now really getting the recognition front-facing that he deserves, how he marries his two styles together has been so key. Pressure fighter without being a reckless one, right? Intelligent pressure with crafty shots, high volume, really yanks on your gas tank. But Chris Colbert and Roger Gutierrez are different type of punchers and counter punchers than somebody like Gervonta Davis. And when you talk about the patience of Gervonta, right. tw averages 20 less than the division average at 135 pounds in terms of punches attempted per round. He doesn't waste punches, which means he doesn't overextend. Gervonta Davis is always in the right place at the right time. Really knows how to govern distance because he can... He can throw an uppercut from far out and land it and make it count. So you're never comfortable against Gervonta at the end of the day. And you're like you said, you expect Garcia to have success early. You expect that volume to lead to some early rounds as Gervonta studies him. But when that transition is made from studying to implementing, that's usually when things change. Can Garcia make it different? I'll tell you, in Garcia's favor, it's not just the gas tank, but it's that it's that high volume, that high volume of smart pressure. He does have a chance to win this fight by decision if he's able to overcome the punching power. And we do know that as much as it is one guy coming up in weight, Garcia, from 130, you mentioned it all week. When these two fighters are standing across from each other, like the push that ended Thursday's press conference, like the intense stare down that was on Friday's weigh-in, Garcia's taller is not that much smaller when you talk about overall thickness than Tank Davis. Yeah, I just don't think his power is going to carry quite like Tank's. I mean, I don't know if anybody's would. I do want to highlight something that I think is going to be a central tension in this fight. One of the things that Garcia loves to do is he loves to, and this is part of where his volume is a, a, a round stealer, not so much an overwhelming force of nature itself. He loves to throw, 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 get a reaction, and then throw off the reaction. Sometimes he'll throw at the exact same time, knowing when it's coming, or he'll get out of the way, and then he'll land a left hook to the body. It's one of his favorite punches. What I'm pointing out is sometimes he has to eat punches as a consequence to do that. He has to draw out reactions. A lot of times he can step out of the way. He can lean out of the way, whatever. He can catch it, whatever the, the need may be. But then he likes to fire something right after that or, as I mentioned before, with it. That's going to be a very strange thing to do with Gervonta Davis for two reasons. One, he just doesn't throw a lot himself. It's going to be hard to get him trapped into coming forward. It's going to be hard to trap... Gervonta, you saw in the Roy Romero fight, he will back up and then float on the outside of the, of the ring if he needs to, if that's actually a better thing for him. So that's one kind of tension you want to point out. Two, as I mentioned, we talked about it earlier, I want to dig into it here a little bit. It's not like Garcia takes a ton of damage, but he is a little bit, a little bit of a I'll take one to deliver one kind of guy. That is risky. Right, he's going to have risky to, against know, Tank Davis. Well, look, there's the potential that Gervonta Davis's power could very well discipline him. There's levels of being disciplined. You can be disciplined into a defensive shell because that's your only way to survive. But you would agree. Hector Garcia, with that amateur background, Hector Luis Garcia, 2016 Olympian with Dominican Republic. Bob Santos told us he's fought in international tournaments all the way around the world. He moved to Russia at one point to train in Russia. So he's not going to be afraid of being here, but he does have the boxing pure uh, amateur experience and craft 
he has multiple ways to win is really what I'm trying to say. He does. It doesn't have to come down to the full-on pressure fighting because at some point, that power from Gervonta is going to get real. It's up to what Louis, Hector Luis Garcia does at that point. Yeah, but here's Which the direction thing. direction do you go? Like, if I had to ask you, I, again, for me, the right hook is maybe one of the better weapons, obviously, for a guy like um, Garcia. But if I had to tell, like, ask people, like, what are some of his dominant punches, it's a little bit harder to identify past, like, a couple of them. It's not with Tank. Yeah. Like, Tank can drop you to the body with either hand. I mean, we, there, this is on film. Um, obviously, he's got a great overhand himself. His left hand is dynamite. Like, he has a range of fight-altering, round-altering, teeth-rattling punches. Garcia does have the capacity to, to play the levels. He can play a little bit on the inside. He can do the angular stuff to set up his own left hand when he wants to. But he doesn't quite have the same... Arsenal, I think is the best way to put it. The same kind of extensive firepower that a guy like Tank does, not just in the overall physical ability, but in the unique way in which, which he can set it up. Which is why it's going to have to be a marriage of styles, as Raul Marquez aptly said after Friday's way, and he's going to have to know no one to hold him, no one to walk away, no one to pressure, all that stuff, all the cliches in the world. But Gervonta Dank Tavis, uh, 27 years old, uh, one of the biggest stars in this game. When we last saw him in Brooklyn, New York, headlining a pay-per-view against Roly Romero, we saw a fight in which Davis respected the power of Romero across from him. He told you in your sit-down with him ahead of this fight that he got touched early. He knew how tough that opponent was. What happens if Garcia cannot gain respect for his own punching power against Tank? Yeah, he's in trouble. He's in trouble at that point. Uh, you know, Tank, Tank can be slowed down. Tank, by the way, now he didn't have any making weight issues this time, but he will punt on rounds. Like, that's just a thing he'll do at times. He will give away a round, sometimes in the middle, sometimes even late if he's feeling like it. That could be a bit of a problem for him. But if if Tank is not disciplined in some kind of way, it's going to be a rough go for Garcia, quite candidly. So I think he's going to have to re – I think one of the things we've seen him do against orthodox opponents very well is angles. Angles is a big key for Garcia. They have to set different kinds of angles depending on the stance of your opponent, but I think that that will be something that he and Santos look into. If you stand in front of Tank and you don't have the ability to match power with him, your options are fairly limited at that point. Uh, and, and by the way, Garcia, not a big mover. He will, again, set angles, yeah, but, but upper, he's not... Upper trunk movement, though. Very good at using that old style. Some, I'm not going to compare some. him to James Tony, but some of that old type of swiveling and and and, and craft. But he's not fast. He's not a slickster like Jerron Ennis in that sense. He's not a slickster like Rashidi Ellis. It's a little bit more. It's definitely coordinated and it's definitely technical and foundational. But it's not like he's not a. I'll say this too. He's a uh, Garcia is a good athlete. I would not call him a great athlete. All right. Well, Tank Davis. So much power, but so much boxing game, and that can often get overlooked when he's stopping guys so early. But when tested at distance, uh, he can show you that he's also one of the best boxers in the game, and that's where those copy box stats just jump off at you. His ability to be so efficient and set up his opponent is Canelo-like in so many ways. When you, when you talk about the standpoint of never wasting shots and only throwing punches when the, when the, when the opening is, is perfectly there after you've done the work to step it up with feints and set it up with footwork and all that. I want to see, as much as it is how our breakdown goes, we're saying, look, Tank's power is going to decide in a lot of ways how successful Garcia can be. I want to see Tank showcase that boxing ability as well and that IQ that he doesn't always get the credit for. Calvin Ford and Tank together, you put those minds together, uh, his ability to adjust, his ability to fake, his ability to, to bring out his opponent's offense, his mind for this game does not get the respect it deserves. And now sometimes Tank can be his own worst enemy in the public eye. And the head of build-up to this fight promotion has featured no shortage of distractions uh, from the legal variety and the court of public opinion and all that. But when he puts his hard hat on Tank Davis and goes to work, mentally, game planning-wise, no slouch. Uh, among any of the pound for pound greats in the world today. Uh, I think one of the biggest areas of growth for Tank Davis that we've seen in the last like three or so years for me has been his timing. Like you saw that in the Romero finish, basically. Tank's timing has gotten really good. Now he was always a good boxer, great boxer before that. But to me, it's gotten, I mean, just razor 
you know, uh, Michelin star sushi chef <laughs> sharp, you know, on, on that on that knife. I mean, really, really, really good. And that has enabled him to do the things where you mentioned, like, if you look at the stats, you're like, my God, like, the numbers, they're not really 47% there. 47% of his power shots. Do you realize how ridiculous that is right. on an that's average? Ins- that's insane. And but, but again, the overall volume, not necessarily all that high. Doesn't need to be, folks. When you've got crippling power and, and to BC's point, You've got phenomenal timing, and the overall fight IQ is there for Tank, which I think it's really lost in the discussion of his power. He is a formidable opponent. And a a proven threat from the idea of hurting you to the body and getting you out of there, too. Quickly, because we don't want to, it's like, you don't want to talk too much about Ryan Garcia and the proposed super fight, I think April 15th Nothing's there until it's there. Both fighters have agreed sort of verbally to it and the stakes and and all of that, and Ryan Garcia did step aside. Originally, he was going to have a January stay busy tune-up, whatever, and is not. He's staying right there in the camp. But is there any correlations or anything outside of staying busy and looking sharp? And Gervonta has a very tough test in Hector Luis Garcia. It's not meant to, to you know, undermine that. But is there something that this fight can do to, to help prepare Tank moving forward for somebody as quick, dynamic, long as Ryan Garcia? Listen, Gar- this Garcia, Hector Luis Garcia, is very different from Ryan Garcia. In many ways, more accomplished, actually, right? Uh, an Olympian. Sure. Um, he certainly has world uh, champion. World champion, right? I mean, there's a lot of things you could point to that Ryan Garcia is not, but Ryan Garcia is a vastly different kind of opponent. The hand speed alone, the ranginess, the distance, those are all things that a guy like this Garcia tonight won't really fully, in any kind of meaningful way, prepare him for. What I will say is, I don't see tonight's fight in any way as a tune up. It got kind of labeled that way since it was the fight before the Ryan Garcia fight. But it's just not. So to have an opponent who is as good as this Garcia is tonight, it, it won't provide specific tactical carryover yeah. to Ryan Garcia. But you have a, you would have a very hard time convincing me that getting ready for a quality opponent like this serves no benefit down the line. The, uh, incredible craft for uh, one Hector Luis Garcia and a big challenge ahead tonight. Luke, as we continue to look at this, pay-per-view main card a four fight offering of course beginning at 9 p.m eastern tonight showtime pay-per-view that co-main event that we talked about earlier it's jerron boots ennis the rising unbeaten welterweight and an interim ibf welterweight title bout against karen chukajin from the ukraine first time fighting in the u.s beat everybody he needed to beat to get in position for this spot with the winner becoming the mandatory for errol spence jr the unbeaten unified welterweight title titleist we had boots ennis with us on Friday at the weigh-in. And by the way, breaking news, we were able to break there with Boots that in his walkout tonight mm-hmm. to the ring here at the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., Stephen Jackson, one, the NBA veteran, the 2003 champion, the co-host, of course, alongside Matt Barnes of Showtime Sports Digital Breakthrough Sensation, All the Smoke. They had Magic Johnson on, by the way, recently. A lot of, a lot of good business advice. We have not had Magic Johnson. We have not had him podcast. on here. But Showtime uh, Sports has a, a beautiful digital spinoff series as well called Fight Towns, in which Stack caught up with one boot Ennis. He was in camp with him. You saw Stack kind of, you know, Stack's got a reputation in the NBA as a guy Hello, who will, he was a pro athlete. Who will throw. I, will, I mean, we mentioned oh, yeah, the yeah, moment yeah. in Detroit. He'll, he'll throw if he has to. But it was great to see them. And, you know, Boots said, hey, Stack, will you walk me out tonight? So that's going to be great to see our colleague there. But as it pertains to the challenge ahead of one boot Ennis, before we can talk about him fighting a Spence Crawford Thurman Staniosis, Virgil Ortiz, everybody who's there waiting in line next at welterweight in that title picture. Your Dennis Sugas, another one. Let's say what we can about Karen Chukajin, who came in, looked happy, go lucky. He's in inc- incredible shape. He's on a heck of a run in his own right. It is a different ball game when you fight Spence. You're also on pay-per-view in the U.S. making his debut. What what would you tell him tonight? He's a heavy underdog. How do you try to slow down uh, someone as dynamic as Boots Ennis? <laughs> what would I tell him? I would tell him, uh, make sure your mouthpiece fits. You better get inside on him, probably. To make, quote Joe, yeah. You better effing get inside him, to, qu- to quote Joe Goose. Make sure your mouthpiece fits. You're going to need it. Um, I, listen, Chukajan, Chukajan, I'm just, I'm, his name is a little bit difficult to pronounce. I apologize. Uh, he is, uh, like Hector Luis Garcia, put himself in this position fairly reasonably did the work 
boxing can be unpredictable. But I, 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 I would almost be wasting the audience's time if I, if I just wasn't honest about what he's up against. He's up against one of the premier dynamic talents. We don't know this for sure, but we think that you, maybe you'll ever see in boxing in, in, over the course of your lifetime. Not it, many Duran Ennis has ever turn up. If going just from the eye test, and that's all we can go on outside of those fights we mentioned. Delorme, Lipinets looked fantastic. But eye test alone, when was the last time you said this about a kid who's 24 and has yet to fight for a title? That you're like, it might be the best in the game right now. We don't know that. We just don't know I that. I can't remember the last time I ever felt this strongly about a prospect. Because there's a lot of times where you get guys, BC, who you'll look at them and you'll say, oh, he can beat the top guy now but they're not fully developed, right? Like you get to him and you say, okay, he's got whatever his best punches are, whatever his best skill set is, that's good enough to beat some of the best guys. But the reality is they, they haven't put all of the pieces of their game together. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> now I'm not saying Jerron Ennis is fully developed. I mean, was he 25 years old, 24? He's got time as well. However, it looks like he's fully developed. You want to fight at range? Great. You want to fight on the inside? No problem. You want to fight southpaw? Not a problem. And by the way, a complete offensive and defensive arsenal at southpaw. A complete offensive and defensive arsenal at orthodox. He can. He has excellent footwork. His balance is tremendous. Shot selection, placement, accuracy, timing, hello, power. It's all there. He also can. It's all there. Land dynamic shots from uh, you know explosive angles that so, just weren't. So, BC, there let me before. pitch this back to you. Is as the as the as the as the friend between us who is you can dig into crates of the boxing knowledge. In this sense, for the fans, what would you say about the opponents that Boots has faced? What do the wins over Delorme, for example, and other ones? What do they tell us in your mind? Uh, they tell us that he's potentially spectacular on a level that you just don't normally see. That's the best way to say it. We've made the young LeBron comparisons, the idea of a finished product already and not and you know i mean who knows we're gonna have to see what it's like when he's in a 12 round barn burner does the stamina hold up we're gonna have to see what it's like the first time he gets hurt along the ropes or dropped in the center of the ring all of those things are lessons that can only be taught when he gets to that point but i've asked him myself in interviews leading up to here on morning combat and said you know how much of yourself have you had to show yet he says not a lot, meaning there's so much more when someone's able to bring it out of him. Wins like Thomas DeLorme, Sergey Lipin, they look great on paper, but you go back and rewatch those, and there was almost no opposition for him in there because he's that dynamic. He switches stances like it's you know a basic thing you like learn in boxing nothing. the first time you put on the pair of gloves, and he's truly a future dynamic, sensational force. He told us Friday after the weigh-in that look if. You know, if I win this and I'm the mandatory for Spence, like, with all due respect to Spence Crawford and everybody wanting that fight, I'll just fight Spence next oh, if he's willing. Okay. So we'll find out. But I mentioned the the new Showtime Sports digital series, which you can check out right now. It's called Fight Towns. You can go to the Showtime Sports YouTube page. But Steven Jackson, the NBA vet, the co-host of all the smoke on Showtime, he visited Philadelphia. I mean, maybe the best fight town in the United States, arguably. He, of course, visited with Stephen Fulton Jr., the unbeaten unified champion at 122 pounds. Danny Garcia, he went to the barbershop, but he got in the ring with young Boots Ennis. Uh, we asked Boots about that on Friday, and he gave he gave Stack props. He said, you know, he's athletic if you ever wanted to, and Stack's in his 40s now, so let's let him retire peacefully that, you know, he could get into this game. But seeing the footage of Stack put on the gloves and work with Boots, it, it was it was great. It was great. You know, I mean, luckily they asked that colleague to get in the ring with Boots and not these two colleagues right there. But uh, if you want to know more about Fight Towns, let's check it. Let's, let's take a closer look. Down, I push up. Hold on. I'm gonna have to open this one up some more. That's good. I'm. I'm. How much right, now? right now, I'm 230. 230. But I ain't in shape. In shape, I'm about 215, right, 220. Cruising. Cruising. Cruiser weight. 220. Yeah. Fine. I've taken boxing classes before, but I've never been in the gym with a real champion. Yeah. Bring up mine. Is that foot behind it? Yeah, so we go. Boom, 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 boom. Being able to learn how to punch, footwork, 
Just everything about boxing that you can't learn it was a great experience. Oh, there you go. Now keep that right hand up when you throw the hook. Yeah. Bop, 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 boom. Let's keep it up. Come on. Good. How do you feel? Good. You want to do an uh, 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 exhibition? I would. You would? I would. Money, right? You got to be the right person, show, though. Showtime, you heard that? You got to be you the right person. Exhibition? Money got to be right, though. There you go. That's what I'm saying. What if Ray Allen with a sucker punch, man? <laughs> got his ass whipped. Got his ass whipped. What he got his ass whipped. It's different without these gloves. Two, one, two. Down the middle. Don't lean. Now your back. See your back leg, though. Watch my back leg. Use your range. You got it. Your arms are so long. You doing this? Yeah. You don't want to do this. You want to yeah. do this? Yeah. Look, 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 I'm here. Yeah, go. There you go. Yo, you catch, catch here. Yeah. Catch here. One, two. See, this is what he's doing. Look, you're doing this, look. And that throws you off. That throws you off. Watch this. Look, you felt you felt that, right? What I'm doing is sitting. I'm sitting with it. So it's like you doing, almost like you're doing this, look, look. Like you're doing karate almost. Yeah, snap it out. Turn your hips with it. Yeah, here you go. Do it again. Sit down. I can learn a lot by looking and listening, but I also want to get in there and try to put it together. Hand pivot. Right. Nice. Catch, catch. Catch, catch. Come on. Catch, catch. Slip, slip, roll. Catch, catch. Slip. Side, side. Woo. I'm hurting. This is why I got so much respect for these guys. The shape they in, the work they do, it's crazy. That is the hardest thing to do. In basketball, you get timeouts. Football players, they get subbed out every three, four plays. Boxing, the shape you have to be in and the focus you have to be in, this is why these people are so great. I guess they just have something you can't teach. I'm standing up, I ain't bending over. 44 years old, I ain't bending over, I'm standing up. It's been a great day, man. I've been able to learn from him and watch him work. He saw me a lot today, man. Square. Appreciate it. Man. What's going on? Everybody yeah, right. dodging him. Yeah. You know, this guy really worked. He's just not coming in the gym just because we're here. He was here at one in the morning. So he really put that work in. Yeah, sure. That's what separated him from a lot of people. A lot of people are do dodging him because they know the work he put in. I'll tell you what, Stephen Jackson graduated high school the same year I did, Luke. <laughs> he still looks great. He still got it. A very, uh, a, a, an incredible boxing fan, by the way, and a great analyst. It was great working alongside and, and, him. And we should say this, a phenomenal guy. Well, that was my buildup to say, ah, look, okay. we know he's a great player, great on his podcast, love his boxing analysis and working alongside him, but he has no business being that nice to us, too. No. So shout out to Steven Jackson. He will be a part of Jerron Boots Ennis' walkout uh, tonight's pay-per-view bout. So, Luke, as we continue on this pay-per-view card, a reminder, 9 p.m. Eastern, their top of the hour, Showtime pay-per-view, four-fight main card. And I want to talk to you quickly about the after side of that. As soon as these fights are done for the evening, the press conference post-fight here after uh, Tank versus Garcia is done, you can check that out on the Showtime Sports channel and also over on the Morning Combat YouTube page. Luke Thomas and myself, Brian Campbell, hitting you up with a post-fight show, breaking it all down from start to finish in tonight's pay-per-view card. And rounding out the pay-per-view card, Boots Ennis in the co-main, a welterweight bout with Speedy Rashidi Ellis and Royman Villa that we talked about that may be the, the best match, could end up being the fight of the night. How about Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade? 34 years old, a two-division champion, unbeaten, but we do know about sometimes his outside-of-the-ring issues being a high-risk, sometimes low-reward opponent. World-class opponent, though, moving up to 168 pounds for the first time and making his PBC debut in the process. And obviously, the reason why that matters is you look at 168 pounds, maybe the most exciting division in this new calendar year of 2023 with all the names like Benavidez, Plant, maybe Charlo, Morel, Maybe Canelo, okay, on and on. You know the big opportunities coming their way. He's got a hungry opponent, though, and one, Damon Nicholson. It was the first fighter who went the distance with unbeaten prospect Edgar Berlanga when he had the first-round knockout streak. He's battle-tested on the elite level. But, Luke Thomas, what you learn about Damon Nicholson at, uh, at uh, Thursday's press conference? Yo, he does not like to be looked over. He does not like to be 
considered cannon fodder. I mean, who would, obviously, but I mean, he gets really upset about it. He is, listen, he's also fighting in his, basically his hometown, yeah. right? He, I think he's out of Laurel, Maryland. This is a huge opportunity for him as well. Not just because Demetrius Andrade has a, I should say, a big name to boxing insiders. He does not have a big name to boxing outsiders. But certainly within insiders, he has a quality name. People know how good he is. This would be the biggest win of Nicholson's career. And this whole week, the buildup to this fight has been very much about, hey, look, Boo Boo Andre is here. It's all about him. He's yeah, who do you want him to now. fight? You want him to fight Jermall Ben or whatever. whatever. Yeah, it's all, that, that, the whole conversation has been about that. And Damon has hated it, hated every bit of it. Can't believe that they're not giving him more consideration. And I will say this too for for Demetrius Andrade. What's kind of interesting about him, BC, is people on the inside of boxing know how good he is. There's really no doubt about that. And at 34, we talked about it this week. It's not like he's taken a ton of damage in his career. He's pretty fresh. Forget he sat out two years earlier in his career to get out of a promotional deal. Right? And now he's coming off a stretch with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Sport that didn't go his way from getting the opportunities he wanted, but he wasn't losing. He wasn't in burn, you know, brawls. He was always able to keep people on the outside when he wants to. He's a hard guy to beat. He's quick. He's smart. But he's as fresh as he's ever been. It's amazing. But I will say this. He does have something to prove tonight. Yeah. Now, we know he's good, but... He needs to make the wider audience remember his name. He needs to make the wider audience, and even I would say even boxing hardcores, care about what's next in the life and chapter of the boxing career of Demetrius Andre. There's been so much hope, so much expectation, that frankly just hasn't been met. Yes. But, but, he still has a chance to do something, as you mentioned, at 168. But that starts here tonight. We'll see if he can get it done. Hungry opponent in Devon Nicholson. That'll kick off tonight's four-fight Showtime pay-per-view card. You can order that right now, by the way. Go to Showtime.com slash PPV. But Luke Thomas, it's time to put the ribbon on the main event preparations here. 135 pounds. Gervonta Tank Davis, his secondary WBA world title is at stake. But for him, this is about survive in advance against a very tough out and get to bigger plans against a different Ryan Garcia. This one, Ryan Garcia, potentially in April. Tonight, though, it's Hector Luis Garcia who told us this could change his life with an upset victory. Sometimes the betting odds don't always tell the story. I would say that this time around, Tank Davis is such a big star, they can be very wide. But Hector Luis Garcia has the potential to make this very, very interesting tonight. What are you looking for in rounds, let's say, one through four, that's going to tell you a lot about how competitive this fight will end up being? I want to see the amount of volume that Garcia throws in the first four. I tend to think he might win the majority of them. So what I would caution is not to make too much of a read early. I think the fight should begin to change one direction or the other at around round five, round six. It's the middle portion that I think you need to pay attention to. Again, we're gonna say it. Is Tank a terrifying great white shark of a puncher? Yes, yes he is. But you would be foolish to not consider his IQ, his craft, and his timing. I think he's gonna wait to see exactly what Garcia shows him. So the early rounds, I'm expecting Garcia to win. But rounds four, rounds five, round six, Let's see how the worm turns when we yes. get to that point. Let's see what happens in that regard for sure. A lot that needs to be proven here. When you talk about the mindsets and all of that, Garcia told us on Friday that the shove, it was a weird shove. But closing Thursday's press conference face-off, <laughs> I didn't know if Gervonta Davis was fooling around, doing the little rolling with the shoulders, but it gave a little push. Gar Garcia was all here. The Hector here. Luis yeah. Garcia. And that little exchange on the stage, Garcia said that woke me up from a competitive right. standpoint, that I've got somebody who's you know obviously going to come out here and look to knock me out, look to embarrass me, look to, to hand me my first first defeat and stop what has been this this inspirational journey to start him here for Hector Luis Garcia. But Tech Davis on the flip side, he saw some Facebook messages from Hector Garcia in the buildup that he said got his attention and motivated him a little trash talk back and forth that he says that was the onus to try to maybe 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 just test where Garcia's at emotionally, right? Do a little half serious push just see what type of response you get. I will say the mental toughness of both was on display this week. And for Javante Davis, after some of that negative headlines and the things he has to deal with in his personal life, 
I believe I've seen the focus in the eye of the tiger that he will need to have tonight against a dangerous opponent to be able to, like we always talk about, compartmentalize, press pause on the distractions out of it, and be able to carry out his job inside of it. Garcia's camp said the same thing. They know how talented, they know how tough he is. But as this fight graduates, if you will, from those opening rounds where we know Tank will be selective, how aggressive will Hector Luis Garcia be allowed to be? Will he be? How much of a risk do you think he's willing to take to win this fight? All of it. All of it. I mean, we asked him, obviously, what happens if you win. You mentioned it earlier at the yesterday's weigh-ins. Like, what happens if you if you win? Because you're widely expected to lose. But what if you actually pull off a yet another upset? And he, to the words you used, it would change my life. And, you know, we're talking about a guy who's had a hard life. A hard life. Not given anything easy. Everything he's got, he's had to earn the hard way twice. Right? We all talk about our dads. They had to go to school uphill, snowing both ways. No, he did. I mean, he did it because it was the Dominican Republic. But you get the idea. This is a guy that knows this is the precipice of changing not only your life, changing your family's life, changing the future generation's life. What do I think he's willing to give for it? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Now, he's not a stupid fighter, so I don't expect him to take stupid risks. Sometimes people think that, oh, I'll just go and do whatever. No, he's not going to do that. But within the confines of what a smart fighter will do, he will exhaust every possibility. I firmly believe he's that. He's going to have to walk a tightrope because for Hector Luis Garcia to be in this fight, it's got to be volume. It's got to be a certain level of a daring nature to get inside, to land clean punches, and try to keep that output low for Gervonta. Gervonta so selective, so efficient, so accurate. But if he can do things that can pull on the gas tank of Gervonta, that's got to be Garcia's best chance. Right. Which means you got to you got to be dangerous. You got to make this sort of a high speed fight. You've got to make Gervonta work. But you've got to be able to swivel. You've got to be able to set those traps. His trainer Bob Santos said we have a level of craft from a amateur standpoint that's been, you know, transitioned to the pro that they don't believe Tank Davis has ever fought yet. Tank Davis has beaten some big names. We'll see if. Hector Luis Garcia can back up that type of boasting and confidence with some next level skill with the fight on the line here, probably at the midway point as the adjustments start being made. Prediction time. Can Hector Luis Garcia pull this upset? I take his ability seriously. And again, I want to be very clear. BC will back me up on this too. Hector Luis Garcia earned this opportunity, beating Chris Colbert, winning a world title against Roger Gutierrez. By the way, beating Chris Colbert on 13 days notice. Think about that for just a second. So this is a guy who did everything he was supposed to and then some to find his way here. I believe he is a worthy adversary worth being taken seriously. But Tank Davis is Tank Davis. And I really believe around the middle, maybe rounds eight, nine, 10, somewhere around that eventually. I think in the middle of the fight's gonna turn and then by rounds eight, nine, 10, you're gonna see him close the show. His power is too dynamic, it is too much. It will eventually be the difference maker. Tank Davis, TKO, round, I'll say nine. This arena behind us, the Capital One Arena, holds close to 20,000 at full capacity for boxing. We knew just a couple days ago, ticket sales upwards of 16,000. I think when Tank Davis is able to put everything that happened behind him, walk into this arena, feel the love, all that preparation is going to meet with a spot where he's going to feel comfortable to go in there, be patient, as we mentioned. But once he starts to make those adjustments, can he hurt Garcia to the body? Can he discipline with the big shots? Once Tank Davis starts going downhill and is able to walk down Garcia, that's when we're really going to see who's willing to risk it all, what can happen in this fight. I also like Tank Davis by a late stoppage. But Hector Luis Garcia, as Luke mentioned, has come this far to feel anything but. He deserves it. He's here to win. He's in this fight, and he has one heck of a chance with... A life-changing opportunity for him at stake. For Tank Davis, it's keeping that unbeaten record and maybe surviving and advancing to a proposed April showdown against fellow unbeaten Ryan Garcia. That could be the biggest fight that's made this calendar year. Who knows? We will check it out. 9 p.m. Eastern tonight is the start of the Showtime pay-per-view. Last plug, showtime.com slash PPV right now can get you signed up and ready. But we're going to throw to close out today's Showtime boxing countdown show with that all access episode we mentioned showtime all access has been on the scene in the build to the training camp to tonight's fight embedded with tank embedded with al and el androide 
But we've had a great time, a trio of fights featuring young prospects. Luke Thomas, I'm Brian Campbell of Showtime Digital's Morning Combat, the award-winning combat sports series that is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the Morning Combat YouTube channel at 11 a.m. Eastern. We're going to be on the back end on the Morning Combat YouTube channel after the pay-per-view ends with our instant analysis show you can follow and subscribe below. But for LT and BC, we're going to toss you over to Showtime's All Access that'll take you right up to the start of tonight's 9 p.m. Eastern start. It's Tank, it's Garcia. Enjoy. Welcome back to everyone here in Washington, D.C. Saturday, January 7th on pay-per-view right here in the nation's capital. It's the main event. Gervonta Tank Davis, 27 fights, 25 knockouts. He will be opposing someone who is surprising everyone in the sport of boxing to be in this position. Hector Luis Garcia for the WBA Lightweight Championship. Everybody in front of you is a threat. You know what I mean? So we know that Garcia coming. I want to know, what is the inner motivation for Tank Davis to take this fight? I ain't going to lie, I just, it feel good to be back home. I'm just ready to shut everybody up. You know what I mean? All the talking that's going around, that's flitting in the air. The seventh, come and watch this. We're putting everybody on notice. Everybody. A champion's career arc under ideal circumstances goes something like this. Prospect turned phenom, turned challenger, turned that dude with the belts around his waist. But for some boxers, the elite among the elites, there's an even higher level that most champions never reach. Such is the tantalizingly close ambitions of one Javante Tank Davis, a phenom no longer. A phenomenon, pretty much. Tank Davis with one big left hand. Tank is 25 knockouts. And now goes Romero. Jaws bruised and faces battered. Tank is one name celebrities and mainstream sports fans. Tank is record setting crowds. But this next level is the hardest one to reach. I'm made for this, you know, I'm here for a reason. For sure. The only person that can break me is myself. And with the sports world stopping bout on the near horizon, he must first take care of Hector Garcia, an unbeaten and older Southpaw, who has already upended another sure-to-be superstar's master plan. Oh! And the counter left sets Colbert crashing to the canvas! Lo único que necesito es estar físico y mentalmente listo. Con dedicación y disciplina todo se puede. Y ese soy yo. ¿Quién puede vencerlo? My job is to show you what I got and I know I'm better. I don't care what he brings. Like, go ahead. There's like nothing you can do that I haven't seen before. So, on Saturday, January 7th, in Washington, D.C., Davis might want to remember an unassailable truth. This is boxing. And things happen on the way to coronation, especially in what promises to be an old-fashioned brawl. Come on, come on, come on, here we go. Twenty feet. One that will either move Davis towards immortality or make the climb back to here that much more steep. I go right over his name. Yeah. Say no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. You're much faster than he was. Today. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. The first time I fought, I was about to go out in the tunnel, and then the people like they were screaming. I just shut the curtains because I was like nervous type <laughs> stuff. But now it's yeah. like I embrace it because I always dreamed of this. That's why I don't never shy away from it. That's what I'm here to do. You know what I mean, to show out so. Number one, number one, my co aquí. Vos Santo. 
Going all the way to the top, baby. To the <laughs> White House. Let's <laughs> go. Cool. Bueno, lo que espero es estar aquí en el top. Me siento orgulloso de ser el primer dominicano en estar en un evento tan importante como este, peleando por Perpivio con uno de los mejores pulsadores de, del mundo. Todos queremos pelear con los grandes para elevarnos. And it could be a life changer for him, you know what I mean? So he wanna he wanna he wanna take my spot. So I'm definitely not looking looking past him. I'm in a real fight. January 7th is gonna be a crazy night. Let's get focused, man. We got a fight to worry about here. Good money, good money. For every boxing story of a blockbuster that's delayed, I love it, Tank. I love it. There's also considerable risk built in for champions who turn to other challengers. Look, dancing with the stars, baby. Dancing with the stars. So when Javante Davis went from one Garcia to another for his first bout of the new year, his choice of Hector Luis Garcia satisfied multiple aims. It's dangerous. It means he's active with two fights scheduled for the first half of 2023. And it means he can put on yet another show, even in sparring, which can be unfortunate for anyone rounding Tank into shape. He's in thought right now, and that's what I'm looking at. So right now, I just want to see what he brings to us. We just got off a plane, you know, a lot of work yesterday from the interviews and stuff, so I want to see how he react. Two sparring partners and rounds is unknown. All right, y'all. Let's go. No, no. Bang! When they watch us in here working, they saying we going bang, 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 bang. There you go. Good. There you go. When he get in that ring, he's on a mission. Because he understand that he got to put his pants on. Training wheels going. You got what you asked for. Let's get it now. It's going down. Good work, good work. He ain't playing with nobody. Step in that ring with him, be prepared. Oh my god! All day. There you go, that's it, that's it. There you go, get your man. Good round, good round. That's it. That's it. That's it, y'all. Good money, that's it. That's all you need today. Then just got off the train. They call it the hurt game for a reason. Because boxing, well, it hurts. Even for a champion like Davis. As Tank trains for yet another pivotal fight, his training is taking a toll. But the cure is just as bitter as what ails him. I know I got to do it. Five minutes? Five will be good enough for you. They definitely went to the uh, kid store and did this. Yeah. <laughs> that water ain't cold. We know that. I know, but... Get in the water, man. man. Just get in the water. He can't cold, sit man. on the edge. Man, just get in there, man. <laughs> no, like, give me the give, give, give me what? the towel, bro. You got the towel, bro. It's, still, it's, it's cool. You wet with you. That cold, man. Man, that ain't cold, man. That ain't cold, man. Look, they baptize you, man. You know, you know they gonna meme your ass up in this kiddie pool, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, no, they not fit up there. All right, give the first bag. You ready? Yeah, give the first bag. Don't have to be ready. Don't dump it on me, though. I'm not paying attention. I'm not paying attention. I'm not paying attention. I'm not paying Yo, I wish I could get all his facial expressions, yo. That's yeah, your faces, man. Nigga got me. <laughs> not bad, Tank. You're doing good, baby. You're doing good. Look, they even got a cup holder. You want something to drink? <laughs> Well, <laughs> 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 you get this one, man. Ain't no jumping out there. I'm a
Few fighters have introduced themselves to boxing's highest level as dramatically as Hector Luis Garcia. Only a year ago, his status was unranked and unknown. But when presented an opportunity, he willed himself into a champion. Garcia is 31 and hails from the Dominican Republic. His long amateur career, over 300 bouts, and an Olympic appearance combined for his late start as a pro. But his style of boxing, exacting, technical, fierce, owes to his resolve, hence the nickname, The Android. Y luego hice una pausa, hice un stop. Y cuando retorné, volví con un boceo, un boceo crudo, quería ir a noquear a la gente. Entonces ahí me pusieron el, el, el apodo del androide. Y el androide, como un robot para adelante. <ríe> incansable, incansable. Eso era lo que me daba la, la victoria siempre. With a distinctive style and that tenacious bearing, all Garcia needed was a chance on a larger stage. There's been a Dominican hiding in the shadows, ready to pounce on his opportunity. In February of 2022, Garcia was a last minute replacement in a WBA super featherweight title eliminator fight against highly touted American, Chris Colbert. Colbert would be a tough fight with two months notice, much less two weeks. The fight began with heavy exchanges from both men. Wow, fierce exchanges. But Garcia soon pulled away establishing his ring generalship with a force no one saw coming. Oh, nice straight left by Garcia. Wow, the pressure by Hector Garcia. Chris Colbert is in a fight tonight. By the seventh round, the shock had fully settled over the crowd, as well as an overwhelmed Colbert. Como yo estaba enfocado, enfocado, dije, este es mío, este es mío, ya, me lo va a ganar. Garcia, lighting him up in the corner. This is a heck of a fight, guys. Garcia's composure, his comportment, I mean, he's a stone cold killer there. The Dominican Republican native was dominant here tonight. Tengo muchos años ya en boxeo, esperando la oportunidad. Cambió todo, cambió mi ánimo, cambió mi vida. Six months after the seismic upset, Garcia fought Roger Gutierrez for the WBA Super Featherweight title. The champion proved a tougher challenge than Colbert, and yet the android won in much the same way, with that pressure wash style and buffering against a late rally to cement a remarkable rise. From unknown to world champion in under a year. Sabes que no ha sido fácil. No ha sido fácil, pero nada imposible. Todo es posible porque solamente es aprovechar cada oportunidad. Y eso es lo que me llena de orgullo, que gracias a Dios eh, la he sabido aprovechar y, y estoy donde estoy, demostrando que tenemos. I think he slept on Shorty. Overlooking, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he was like, man, I got this. Hector gonna be Hector. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long he gonna be Hector, but look at him. Yeah, he tall, but he, he, ain't, tall. Yeah. he ain't tall as Barrios. He ain't strong as Barrios, neither. Nah, 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 nah. He ain't strong as Roller, either. Nah, nah. Uh -huh. nah. Mm -mm. I think he can't take body shots. That's why he guard his body. He places his punches pretty good, though. He got a sneaky left uppercut he throws yeah, sometimes. Yeah, because his reach. Because his reach. Mm -hmm. You'll look at him thinking, they did this, right there. just do it. Uh -huh. Hector's my key. I call him the key to success. Look what he done. He beat up a top prospect. Then he went and won the belt. He won a strap. So he's feeling all that fame and glory. He 
he ain't trying to get that up. So I take that serious. In a fight, you never know what's going to happen. So you have to be concerned about everything. He's undefeated. He had nothing to lose. What we got to do is, is disrupt his ass so bad where he want to take that fight. He want to put everything on the line. And that's where he's going to get hurt at. Look at that. Tank knocking this dude out. Man, I ain't trying to knock. I'm trying to punish him. I want, I want the world to see what Tank going to bring. He's going to come with everything. He got nothing to lose. He got a lot to gain. So I know he's coming. He don't care. It's just how much pain that he's willing to take. The path from champion to still higher is fraught with pain and pleasure. And for Davis to become Tank, to summon and inflict every time out, requires steady guidance. Calvin Ford understands that burdens weigh heavy and that triumph can hurt, just not as much as losing will. Feeling right? I used to tell Tank, man, I see why you waking up with a smile, man. You can't help but waking up with a smile when the sun show up every day <laughs> years of being with tank we at that level been doing it for so long we should know what we're doing we can trust each other in the ring outside the ring it's bigger than boxing the way how i describe it with him man he's trying to afflict that pain even when we working out and he said man i feel it get what i'm saying i said you pose to feel it If someone understand you, understand where you come from, and they can bring the best out of you, that's what Calvin been doing for me. You seeing a kid that's becoming a man, he's coming into his awareness of being who he's going to become, and it just—I had something to do with it. Chop, chop. Oh, good rim, good rim. I like the way y'all jump right back in it. That's right. Make them jokers move. Make them jokers move. Oh, I love what I hear. Y'all making him sing. For most of Davis's celebrated career, Ford and other trusted advisors remained in control. But now, those in camp can sense a shift in command. Make them jokers move. As the fighter himself begins to oversee everything, while aiming at the destiny he alone must fulfill. There you go. I go with Give it up for him, y'all. I watch him when he get in that ring. He ain't the same. You know that I got it. Baby, you can work it. You know that I got it. You know that I got it. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm taking my priorities, sir. These things matter. It's not a little tank anymore. I'm watching the grown man. You got it? Shake it. We got power. We got time. The journey that I've been with him, I know it's more to come. Because we reaching that pinnacle. Because he's hungry. We unstoppable when we come together. The bouts ahead may be tantalizing. But Davis understands that their significance will be tied to January 7th. Let's get focused, man. And Tank's hunger dictates that only Hector Luis Garcia will remain in his scope for now. We got 30 days, 30 nights. That's how we looking at this. Breathe, twist, squeeze, four, three, two, and one. So good. Let me hear you breathe. Inhale through your nose, exhale out your mouth. There we go. Squeeze those glutes, pull the belly button in, lock out the legs, point your toes. You're not looking at yourself, you're looking down at the mat, guys. Protect your neck. Stay with me. We frame out those obliques right here, all the while working those upper abs, squeezing your glutes, engaging that whole body. You've got 10 seconds. Yep, breathe through it. Use your breath. Three. Two, and one, those hands come under the glutes. Let's hit those lower abs, tiny little flutter kicks. Hands under those glutes, let's go in three, two, one. Let's go. Guys, keep going. Timer's on. Pilates may not seem tailored for boxing, but the mind-body exercise is perfect for fighters, helping them to focus on breathing, stability, core strength, and control. No es fácil, pero uno lo hace por el beneficio que uno consigue. Te ayuda psicológicamente. Eso es todo. Eso es lo que uno realmente busca para en la pelea sentirse, sentirse bien. 
Hector Garcia discovered the discipline thanks to someone who has undoubtedly influenced and guided Garcia's career in remarkable ways. His good friend and trainer, Bob Santos. una relación más que un entrenador como una, una familia y para mí significa mucho suavecito 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 que una persona que, que te aconseja te habla positivo siempre está pendiente de todo el trabajo de, de la alimentación de todo so we brought him in for the power for tank and we brought him in for the size of tank So we got we got all our sparring covered right here. Ole, 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 ole. After a banner 2022, trainer and fighter waved goodbye to obscurity and now must adjust to boxing's brightest spotlight. Woo! Don't get it twisted. You don't beat a guy like Chris Colbert on 19 days notice. Ain't too many can say that. Yes! Yes! We going against the best so we can prove who the best is. That's what we want. You want to go against the best. It's going to be a brutal fight. But as far as boxing goes, if he wants to box, that's fine. I'm riding a horse that's had over 400 amateur fights. Most experienced fighter Tank's ever fought in his life. I guarantee you that. Hector, come on, man. Apples to apples. Everybody knows who the fight of the year was. Delivering another upset on January 7th would serve dual purposes, catapulting Garcia and Santos to stardom and putting Dominican boxing on the map. Mucha gente dicen que los dominicanos nos sirvimos en, eh, en el boxeo y yo veo que tú tienes una camisa ahí que dice peleador del año y quizás no te la van a dar. A mí no me importa, pero yo mismo compré esto y te voy a dar el honor yo para mi página. Que tú eres el peladio de daño. Gracias, hermano. Gracias. Gracias. No Dominican has ever headlined a pay-per-view at this level. So he, he's, he's making history not only for himself, but for his country. Muchas gracias, mi gente de República Dominicana, de parte de Joey. Muchas gracias, hermano. Hermano. Para este grupo. Sí. Gracias, gracias. ¿Quién es? ¿De Rocky Marciano? ¿Qué es Rocky Marciano? The power of my mind There is no place that you can hide You fall And I'll rise With the power of the light You know that you will not survive For Juvante Tank Davis Every answer delivered with thudding left hands has only yielded even more questions. For now, they're bigger, broader, simple and yet infinitely complex. How much is enough? How high can he climb? How far can he take this? You're happy, but you know deep down inside it's more to accomplish. That's how I feel as a fighter. Our job is never done. I want it all. For unbeaten Hector Luis Garcia, the intention of Ames is similar to Davis, and yet altogether different too. At stake, another even more earth-shattering upset on an even grander stage. That is, if he can shock the boxing world once more. Es un peleador que se prepara, es trabaja duro. Cuando sabe que va a pelear con alguien que le va, que le puede dar problema, él tiene problemas serios como él. Serio. For both men, the concept that matters is ambition. Both are aimed towards even more dizzying heights. But on Saturday, January 7th, in our nation's capital, one unbeaten boxer will move forward. The other will learn one of boxing's oldest lessons, that ambition is necessary, at least until the moment they never see coming. On Saturday, January 7th, 
Javante Tank Davis clashes with Hector Luis Garcia in a matchup of... We are charged to protect these kids. Go! I'm a police officer for North Minneapolis and coach for the North High High School. Go! These kids don't trust cops. It's definitely a difficult time right now. Kind of weird, but I'm building bonds with police. The violence is nonstop. You can hear the gunshots. When them lights flicker at 7 o'clock, you ain't hear none of that. Good afternoon to you, and we welcome you. Premier Boxing Champions continues with our official weigh-in of a big night of action at the Capital One Arena. A loaded card with no shortage of storyline. Demond Nicholson and his opponent Demetrius Andre. Here is Roy Manavilla. Here is the undefeated Speedy Rashidi Ellis. Fighting out of Kiev, Ukraine. Please welcome Karen Chukajan. He is the young star of boxing, the hard-hitting, welterweight top contender, Jerron Boots Ennis. I'm just different from these other guys. I don't do it for the money. I do it because I love being people up. Who knows? I, I could be lined up here with you myself. There'll be no separating them tomorrow. Here is Hector Luis Garcia and his opponent. He's the popular star of boxing, Gervonta Tank Davis. Some intense stairs, gentlemen. The weights are in. The main event is set. Showtime pay-per-view is going to be a rockin' here in D.C.